Now, I mean, you're a 6'5", 300 pound black dude with cornrows hauling around a tuba. You have no idea. People still ask me, have you ever been to a concert? I was like, well, I, I dabble a little bit, you know, sometimes. I don't tell them that I'm a tuba player. And then they see me on stage and go, what? <laughs> This is Richard Antoine White, and as the principal tubist for the New Mexico Philharmonic and Santa Fe Symphony, he's right at home on stage. A far cry from his childhood in Baltimore, where home was often the street. This water fountain has got to be just as old as me, because it's where I would drink and bathe if I needed to. That was my bathroom, man. Growing up on the streets, your mom was in and out of your life. She was an alcoholic. What were those days like? Every day was literally about finding my mom or finding something to eat. I would find food in trash cans. And because I didn't know if I would eat again, I would chew it and then just store it under my tongue. So later on, if I got really hungry, I would take that food that I had stored under my tongue and eat it later. Richard eventually found two lifelines, his adoptive grandparents who took him in and joining the school band, which revealed a natural ear for music. It was exciting to me. And when I first started playing, I would play the Cosby show, uh, Sanford and Son theme shows and beatbox. No one else could do that on their instruments. But you, you couldn't read music. Right? You couldn't count the beat. How did you pick it up? I started playing tuba on something called a cassette tape. It would say, this is B flat. Play B flat. Pause the tape. When you have mastered B flat, move on to C. Do pause. You learned from a cassette tape? Yes. That's awesome. He became good enough that he decided to audition to get into the prestigious Baltimore School for the Arts. There was just one problem. I, I showed up. A day late, the director had left something there, just happened to be there. He said, what are you doing here? Auditions was yesterday. And I don't know how, but I boldly looked him right in the eyes and said, but I'm here now. And he said, the audacity or the determination was so fierce that he had to hear me. Richard got in. And from there, he went on to the Peabody Conservatory of Music, then Indiana University, where in 2012, he became the first black man in America to get a doctorate of music in tuba. He credits his many mentors along the way. And to all the teachers out there, I really want you to know that I am what happens when you don't give up. He's now a tenured professor himself at the University of New Mexico. My primary responsibility is to inspire hope, to show every little kid, whether they want to play tuba or trumpet, that regardless of their advantages or disadvantages, that they can do it. And much like a symphony, Richard says the key to life is everyone playing their part together. What do you want people to take away from your story? Be kind, recognize and acknowledge that it takes a village. We were put on this planet to work and live together. Let's offer the world the best version of ourselves. Cumulatively, that's gotta equal something magnificent. And I hope we can all help each other to achieve that. Amazing. That was fantastic. Oh. Dr. White is, uh, you talk about a spirit animal. Wow. He is uh, mm. quite the motivation. Um, and it, it, if he hasn't achieved enough, by the way, Richard also set the goal to be the first musician to perform on all seven continents, even Antarctica. That's great. Um, his story is featured in an anthology series called Hi, I Am. Mm. It's over on the Magnolia Network. And his new book, I'm Possible, that book is out tomorrow. I Can't love that. To I'm that. Possible. I'm Possible. What a great story. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. High forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcast. All right, we are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, and this morning we are catching up with an actor sharing her own heritage on screen. For more than 40 years, Sonia Manzano played Maria on Sesame Street, and now she is back with a new series. It's called Alma's Way. It's a children's program about a six-year-old Puerto Rican girl named Alma growing up with her friends, family, and community in the Bronx. And Sonia Manzano is here to tell us all about it. Sonia, good to good see you Good morning. Again. Nice to be here. I'm very excited. Now, so this has got to be a, a, a dream come true in a sense, in that you know, you've been so much a part of uh, our kids' childhood, and now you are expanding that with a whole new generation, but mm. these are personal stories. To these you. are personal stories. It's based in the South Bronx. It's a Puerto Rican, New Yorkan family, because that's what I am, and that's what the PBS Kids asked me to do, to create a Latino-based show. I made it my own. I love it. I was just reading about this. Um, you, you know, music plays a large part uh, in the series. And we have this clip of the young actress who plays Alma. I can't wait. Um, and she's recording the theme song. And it was produced by Lin-Manuel Miranda. Yes. Let's, yes. let's take a listen and then we'll chat. from Sesame Street, and I knew his father, Luis Miranda, who's very active in the sure. Puerto Rican community sure. for many years. So I called him up and I said, so hook me up with your son. We need a great theme song. Uh, and you, as you know, Lin-Manuel has a way with words. Just a bit. Just a bit. So, you know, he can say with four words what it takes us 50 words. Right, right. So he was able to put in rap, salsa, reggaeton, uh, uh, the, the hip hop that, that little uh, Summer Rose Castillo delivers mm -hmm. for us, so all good. in thir what, 50 seconds? Yeah. That's amazing. She's so good. we're thrilled that's, with it. And that's what's you know, so great because the art of the opening theme song has been lost. Mm. And I think now it, it, it's great for kids to have something to say. It sets up the whole I show. Agree. It shows the number six train, which as you know, there was an underground t-shirt for years that went around and said, the number six train to the Bronx and Puerto Rico. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I was happy to bring that up. You know, the, the other great thing is the, the diversity that's happening in children's programming. I mean, our sister network, Telemundo, has a, an exciting series called Club Mundo with characters uh, primarily speaking Spanish, uh, and your show Alma's Way is another way into that. Uh, is it? Because when you started in Sesame Street, you know that was a, a, a groundbreaking right, series yeah. right. to see kids of color and white kids and and of all backgrounds. And now here you are taking it to the next level. I'm taking it to the next level because it's not only showing a diverse community. The show is about thinking. Mm. I was concerned that kids today were so uh, overwhelmed with information, with data. They had to memorize. Mm. They had to take a test every 20 minutes. They have to learn information at the same moment as their peers as opposed to at their own pace. So they were thinking if they couldn't do these things, they weren't smart mm -hmm. or they weren't as good as. So I thought, wait a minute, before they know they have a brain and they could think, they're turned off to the whole thing. Mm. So Alma's Way is about thinking. Every episode, she has a problem. A little thought bubble appears next to her head, and we see the process of her thoughts. Mm. So I'm thinking that kids are home going, I could do that. Sure. I got a head. All right, I didn't, I didn't memorize the test, I didn't pass the test, or I can't regurgitate this information the teacher wants, but I can put two and two together on my own. I love that. I, I, I found refuge in my own mind when I was a little girl. I got away from negative things in my own mind, and that's what I'm hoping kids uh, will do. I love that. I'm sitting here you know, watching you talk, and I'm thinking, what is it? Why do I love you so much? <laughs> the only other person I've been this way with was Julie Andrews, and I think I know why. You know, Maya Angelou has a quote. She says, you may not remember what people say, but you remember how they make you feel. Oh. And for you, when we see you walk in the room, you remind us of how, you, that's how you made us feel. Oh, thank and you. And so I thank you for that. And so you, we, we talk so much these days about mental health and self-esteem, and it seems like this show, you're almost passing the torch to do that for some other young people. Well, thank you. I'm so happy that you feel that way, and I'm thrilled that Fred Rogers Productions and Ellen Doherty, the producer there, mm. took it to the next level, because mm. I didn't care much what the kids thought about it. I just wanted to 
them to know yeah. that they could think. Oh, well, Sonia, thank you it. so much. So exciting. Thank Alma's you. Way uh, premieres on PBS stations and streams on PBS Kids on October Congratulations. 4th. Thank you. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. This morning, Jill, you got a great She Made It that is perfect for Hispanic heritage. Yeah, this is a really beautiful story. I had the chance to talk with social media influencer Yasmin Maya. She went from doing makeup videos to creating her own brand, and she has overcome some incredible obstacles on her path to success and happiness. Take a look. Influencer Yasmin Maya has over 3 million followers glued to her makeup and hair tutorials. Hey, my beauties. Welcome back to my channel. Bienvenidas a nuevo canal. Yo soy... At 30 years old, the wife and mom with baby number two on the way. Oh, Aww, baby bump. You are. <laughs> is also behind Birdie Lashes, the brand she officially launched last December with foam ink lashes and eyeliner that doubles as adhesive. What makes your lashes so easy? Because I know a lot of people are like, okay, it's another lash and I can't ever put them on myself. Our lashes are vegan, cruelty-free. They're super ultra soft and they're very light. So you're not gonna feel them heavy. You just pop it right on top of the eyeliner and it will stay. How proud are you of yourself? I look back and it's unbelievable. Hi guys. Okay, welcome to my channel. Nine years ago, Yasmin started her YouTube channel, Beauty Bird. She was living alone and in limbo. Not in the Southern California town where she was raised, but in her birth country. I'm going actually through a really hard time right now. Walk us through what your childhood was like and what you went through. I was born in Mexico, very poor, like almost homeless. I didn't move here to the United States until I was like a year and three months. I grew up thinking I was part of this country. And it wasn't until I got to high school when my mom got deported that it hit me with the reality that I am actually an illegal immigrant. Yasmin's father, also not a U.S. citizen, was deported shortly after her graduation. I started realizing I'm not going to be able to apply for a job or even go to college and get scholarships. I was in fear of deportation. Then at 18, Yasmin boldly left the only place she had called home, bound for Tijuana, hoping to find work until she could return without worry. It's not a life, honestly, to just live in fear. My boyfriend went after me and we ended up getting married. But her husband had to patiently wait for her in the States. 
Even her parents have legally returned to this side of the border. Yasmin was on her own for three years, waiting on her green card. Well, every day I would cry. <laughs> So how did you overcome that? Well, I started watching YouTube videos, girls doing makeup, and my mom was like, why don't you give it a try? And I was like, you know what, you're right, I have nothing to lose. Short on cash, Yasmin receives a camera and cosmetic from her mother, but then she accidentally burned off her lashes while heating hot water for the shower. My little tiny eyelashes. I was so sad, and it was like, no, I'm not gonna give up. I went out and bought my first false lashes. Is that incredible? Yeah. Finally, reuniting with her family in May of 2013, she continued to post and rake in ads and sponsorships, and a new dream emerged. I started to see more and more people saying, I unfortunately don't know how to apply lashes. She decided to develop an affordable false lash line for every eye shape. Whatever fiesta that you can think of, this is for you. Today, with close to 80,000 units of lashes sold, multi-million dollar portfolio across all of her businesses, Yasmin feels her success as a Mexican Latina immigrant is especially poignant at this time. This is Hispanic Heritage Month. What does this month mean to you? What I try to do is use my voice for other people that feel like they need to be quiet or ashamed of like where they're coming from. And so I take this month very serious to try and use it to our advantage and just be heard. Any dream is possible. Yeah she, yeah, she really has an unbelievable story. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Adults like to characterize Gen Z as an apathetic generation, and we don't care about social issues, and we're just on our phones all day. But in actuality, Gen Zers, especially black organizers and activists right now, are using social media to organize millions of people all around the world for this cause that we're fighting for, which is black liberation. And previous generations have failed us, and have failed this country, and Gen Z is not going to wait anymore. We, we don't have the luxury to wait anymore because our lives are depending on our actions. My name is Nupal Kiazolu. I'm 20 years old and I'm the president of Black Lives Matter Greater New York and founder and CEO of my national campaign, Vote 2000. I've been an activist and organizer since the age of 12 years old. So I've been in the game for eight years. I like to call myself a young veteran. Sometimes I feel much older than I actually am. But I've been a part of many different activist organizations. And as a child, I was always very intuitive, always super, super articulate and outspoken. And a lot of times it used to get me in trouble when I was younger because I just did not shut up. So, and my mom would even tell you, like I used to read the newspapers and I'd be telling my mom about the current events that's in a newspaper at five years old. So I've always been like very political, even before I knew what it meant to be political. 
New details in the investigation into the shooting death of Florida teen Trayvon Martin. The 17-year-old died from a single gunshot wound to the chest, fired from intermediate range, according to an autopsy report reviewed by NBC News. The FBI is gathering information and evidence as part of a civil rights probe to find out whether or not Martin was shot by George Zimmerman because he was black. So Trayvon Martin's case definitely wasn't the first incidence of police brutality that I've heard of or I saw on camera. But at 12 years old, I was starting to be able to understand what that actually meant. And when I saw Trayvon Martin's case and what George Zimmerman did to him, it was absolutely inhumane and I was angry. And I couldn't fully articulate how I felt at the time, but I knew that I was angry and I had to do something. And that's when I came up with the idea of holding a silent protest at my middle school. And I came to school with my hoodie on and a message taped to my back, do I look suspicious? And eventually I ended up being written up, ironically, by my history teacher. And the only ally I had throughout that time was my math teacher. And this woman literally risked her job by marching down to the principal's office with me in solidarity with her hoodie on. And we debated back and forth with the principal for a few hours. And instead of suspending me, my principal had me go home and have my case ready for him tomorrow. I looked up my First Amendment rights and then I came across the case Tinker versus Des Moines, which in short is a Supreme Court court case that established the right for students to peacefully organize within school grounds. And that was the focal point of my argument the following day when we went right back to the principal's office in the morning. And I ended up winning the case. And when my teacher and I went to the cafeteria to get lunch, literally every single student in there had their hoodies on with the same exact message. And my teacher and I just stood there and cried. And that's when I knew that being an activist and organizer was my calling. We need to live. We need to live. My brothers need to live. My sisters need to live. The common things that I faced is misogyny and ageism and obviously racism uh, from other white counterparts that happen to have been a part of those social justice organizations. And it was definitely frustrating up until I came in contact with Black Lives Matter Greater New York in 2016. And I definitely didn't walk into the organization looking for any titles. I just wanted to do the work and be respected. And when I met the, uh, the former president, his name is Hulk Newsom, he immediately saw the potential in me and really helped me amplify my voice in the work that I do. entirety of the seven hours that we were driving down there to Charlottesville, Virginia, every thought was running through my mind. I'm like, what if I'm killed? What if I'm arrested in a state that I'm not from? It was just so much anxiety. And a lot of people ask, what did you tell your mother at the time? And what I told my mom is I went, I was going down to Charlottesville to protest against white supremacy, but I didn't tell her that the KKK or neo-Nazis would be there because I didn't want to scare her. And I'd already made up my mind. I, I had a feeling in my heart that things weren't going to go as well as we hoped for them to go, considering the circumstances. Like, I didn't expect for anybody to be killed that day and for dozens of people to be injured, including me. I did not expect for it to get as bad as it did. Watch out! years old, I never thought that I'd have to come face to face with a neo-Nazi or a KKK member fully roped. But that's the reality of our country. And our country likes to portray itself as this post-racial utopia. But Charlottesville is the perfect modern day example amongst a plethora of other modern examples that we are not where we are supposed to be. We're not even close. And that's because we have not even come to the point where we've acknowledged that. Like America has literally put a band-aid on a gunshot wound. 
racism is a gunshot wound that's consistently bleeding out and the only thing that america is doing is putting a band-aid over it then they're like oh this is not who we are as a country but i would argue this is who we are this is who this country is and until we begin to acknowledge that and what racism actually is then we're not going to get anywhere and we're going to continue to go in this cycle because we're in the digital age and we're, we have phones that are able to record incidents of police brutality. And a lot of times they do go viral. And when people keep seeing instances of black death and brutal, police brutality over and over and over again, it kind of becomes the new norm. And a lot of people have been desensitized to seeing police brutality videos. But I believe that we have to be more intentional in terms of how we circulate these videos throughout the media and it can also and it is very traumatic to watch black death on camera and it be retweeted and reposted millions and millions of times and black people should not have to be murdered on camera and brutally beaten on camera in order for people to recognize that it's a problem What I would say to young people all around the world that want to be an activist and want to be a part of this movement towards change is that it's never a wrong time to stand up for what's right, first and foremost, and your voice matters. Don't let anybody try to tell you otherwise. There are so many people that try to stop me and what I have to say because they're like, you're a young black girl from the hood. What do you have to say? Listen, like, I can do this. And overall, it doesn't matter where you come from, whatever walk of life, that you may be in right now, you can effectuate change and your voice matters. I came up with the idea in 2017 of Vote 2000 when I held a voter registration drive at my campus and I had to get all four schools on board to bring their graduating seniors down to the library to get them registered to vote. And a lot of them were really irritated because they're like, why do we have to do this? And then somebody said something that struck a chord in me. They said, we already voted for the president. And when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, people don't really realize how much local politics actually matter. So that's why I was like, I'm gonna come up with this idea, vote 2000. It appeals to Gen Z. I'm a Gen Zer. I was born in 2000 and we're one of the largest new voting blocks in this country. So um, in 2018, I was blessed with the opportunity to team up with DoSomething.org. And in partnership with DoSomething.org, we were able to get over 100,000 young people registered to vote. And I was just so, so proud of that. And right after undergrad, I'm going to law school and I'm going to run for the 9th Congressional District, which is my district right in Brownsville, Brooklyn. And then afterwards, going to go right run for office in 2036 for president. As a young black activist and organizer that's been doing this for eight years now, a lot of people would ask me before, who are you fighting for? Why are you fighting? And I would always respond for future generations of young black people so they don't have to experience the things that I've experienced today. I didn't think that I'd see this much activation, organizing and change within my lifetime. And if you would have told me this three months ago, that this many people all around the world would come together in the name of black liberation, equity and justice, I would have called you insane. I just didn't see it. I was fighting towards it. I was hoping that my kids' kids could see it, but I didn't think that I would see it. And now that I can confidently say, and sometimes I get emotional when I say it, that I'm not just fighting for the future, but I'm also now fighting for the present. And that's what's most inspiring to me right now about our generation, that fighting spirit within Gen Z, that we're not gonna wait and we're not gonna ask politely, we're taking it. We're taking our lives back, we're taking our futures back, and we're taking our present back. Michael, thanks for doing this. Good to see you, man. All right, you as well. Thanks for having me. We could spend most of this interview talking about New Jersey high school football, I think, but 
Maybe we'll save that for a different time and focus on the save movie. Save that for an- <laughs> another time. We can save that for another time, man. <laughs> so let's talk about Without Remorse. I told you I just watched it today. And man, it comes out and grabs you from the word go and doesn't let go for the next couple of hours. Um, what does it feel like to be on the, the eve of this movie coming out that you've poured so much into? I, I'm excited. You know, honestly, uh, you know, uh, we finished shooting this movie right before the pandemic hit. So to go through post and edit, you know, and really, you know, put this movie together um, and not really sure where exactly, you know, when it was going to come out. So now that things are loosening back up and, uh, you know, getting ready to, you know, re- drop it on, you know, on Amazon Prime, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited about this one. Man. So let's give people a little bit of the backstory without giving too much away about who John Kelly yeah. is. It's based off the Tom Clancy book, which right away people lean in and they want to see it. But this is sort of the origin character, origin story of a character they may not know as well. Yeah, John Kelly. So this is like, you know, arguably, you know, his you know, second, probably most famous character that 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 he's um you know created you know in his novels um and i've always been a fan of the tom clancy universe you know growing up playing rainbow six video games and really you know envisioning myself throughout these missions so when i had an opportunity to really like give uh you know john kelly a uh you know a fresh take and modernize the story you know that that kind of is more reflective of the world that that i live in today you know i just jumped at the opportunity um he kind of you know he goes through a personal tragedy you know, he's a you know, Navy SEAL, you know, he's a, a really loyal guy, you know, he believes in um, everything that he does. Um, and, and when he uh, gets wronged, you know, he, he wants some answers, you know, and, and this movie kind of takes place uh, of, of John looking for those answers, uh, no matter where they are. The video game part of this is crazy to me because you literally are living out the fantasy of every kid. You grow up playing a video game and now you get to go live it out. Exactly. And that, and that's one of the things, you know, I mean, I love my job, man. And I love being able to, um, you know, to, to, you know, do my own stunts. You know, I mean, as a kid in the living room, when you're taking the couch cushions and, you know, you're, you know, you're jumping off of them and, you know, pretending, you know, playing make believe of whatever it is. Uh, these are the type of movies that I watched growing up. And so I finally be able to get into a place where I could do my own stunts and I can train for, um, you know, underwater sequences and, you know, and burning cars and, you know, tactical training and explosions and all that good stuff. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a dream come true. You've called this the ideal movie for you, that when you saw this, you were like, I need to do this. Why do you say that exactly? Uh, because I'm, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, looking up to, you know, you know, movie stars and action, action heroes like, you know, Tom Cruise and, uh, Michael Jai White, you know, Wesley Snipes, Jackie Chan, you know, these guys, they always put the work into it, you know, they, they study, they train, um, so they could, you know, be put in a position to actually do the stunts themselves. And I always wanted to do that. You know, I always wanted a, a vehicle or a movie that would allow me to actually do my own stuff. So, you know, for this one, I had a great stunt team, you know, we were very safe, uh, put a lot of time into. Uh, working out and training and getting prepared so they felt comfortable enough putting me in those positions. When you say you're doing your own stunts and you do in this movie, when I watch you walk up to a burning car, casually open the door and get in, <laughs> or plunge into a river, let's say, and hold your breath underwater for a while, that's you? That's Michael B. Jordan? Yeah, that's me, man. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, I have a, like my stunt double, Clay, you know, it goes through things, makes sure everything's safe, you know, works out all the kinks, makes sure, you know, everything is, is awesome. Uh, and safe as safe as can be, but no man, like you know, doing military, you know, you know, diving, you know, and and you know, going to dive tanks and you know, spending hours and hours and hours under there, becoming comfortable. Um, uh, the burning car is like it's not too much you could really do to train for that. You know, I, I think that's the one I I thought about the least. I was like, all right, cool, I gotta do what. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's do it. Don't think about it. You know, you know, you put some, you know, flame retardant gel on you to make sure, you know, you can stay as cool as possible for as long as possible. But you still might walk away with a few less eyebrows and eyelashes. <laughs> and, uh, it, it gets pretty hot getting in and out of the car. Is there anybody in your life or on set saying, hey, you're one of the biggest movie stars in the world. We don't need you walking into a burning car right now. I mean, I... I <laughs> All the producers, I think everybody was was saying that, you know, <laughs> had my mom on speed dial, you know, so I think it was one of those things where uh, I, I definitely 
had to persuade them at certain moments to 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 let me do the things that they were like, ah, you don't have to. I was like, no, 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 I want to. Let's do it. Let's let's, let's figure it out. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. You've said before that your mom gets tired of watching you die in movies over the course of your career, so she didn't want to see it in this one. Yeah, this one gave her a lot of anxiety, but um, but but it, it wasn't as nerve wracking. I'm sure as some of the other characters that I played that uh, didn't make it out. You know, so so you know, as you get older, you know, you start to, you know, mature and have other roles that that you want to see them. You know, make it to the you know to the end of the credits. You know, so it's uh, it's it, it was good. Speaking of the end of the credits, there's a moment after the credits mm -hmm. that leads me to believe this may be the beginning of something for you. Is that fair to say in this series? Yeah, yeah, that's fair to say. I mean, I think we want to you know definitely stick around after the. Uh, after the credits, um, but yeah, I think we're you know, you know, we're alluding to the fact that we think we created a world that was you know interesting and cool and fun, and uh, we want to see where you know John Clark goes from here, you know, and uh, I don't think he's done yet, you know, hmm. so yeah, he has a lot more to do, and I'm really interested to see where he goes. Is it cool for you, Michael, to have reached the point in your career where you can live out some of these fantasies, to have grown up watching Matt Damon be Jason Bourne or Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible or all the stars you mentioned, and now there you are standing as the guy that some kid watching movies growing up is going to say, I want to be Michael B. Jordan in those movies? No, that's cool, man. That's, uh, that's you know, yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to say that's something that, you know, I, I, I you know, I'm hopeful of, you know, and I want to continue to do movies like this. Um, you know, continue to, to continue to inspire. You know, I think representation is extremely important. You know, so to be able to, you know, do a, a wide, uh, you know, range of movies in different genres, and this is like my first one in this space. So to be able to, um, to be able to, you know, to do this type of movie is is is, is exciting for me, and it hopefully inspires uh, a lot of kids too. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. <laughs> There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just did too. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, that's just shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, people may not realize that you're a producer of the movie Outlier Society, your production company, which has become this sort of force in Hollywood. Talk a little, if you can, Michael, about why you established that, what you wanted to accomplish with that, and how it's grown now to back these major projects like Remorse. Yeah, I think in the beginning, um, you know, starting my own production company kind of, sparked from um, my time on Friday Night Lights and Parenthood, you know, being around, you know, Peter Berg, you know, Sarah Aubrey, you know, and uh, Jason Kadem and, and kind of, you know, Pete, Pete was like, you know, one day you're going to get tired of like uh, waiting for the phone to call. You know, you just got to gotta start owning things and creating your own IP and, and uh, ownership, ownership, ownership. And I was like, you know, and at that at young age, I just started, you know, thinking about creating things, you know, creating opportunities for others. You know, I've been extremely blessed to have a you know a fruitful career thus far and I want to um you know you got to pay that forward you know um so to be able to like create have a production company who um 
you know, can shine a light on stories that maybe normally wouldn't wouldn't get told, you know, and also, uh, you know, normalize, you know, um, you know, films and filmmakers and building around talent that um, that maybe wouldn't have gotten a shot or opportunity. You know, I want to be the the tip of tip of the spear in that type of way and and not uh, create those opportunities for them. And you put riders in the deals where you have to have a certain level of inclusivity in terms of who works on the movie, which is an amazing piece of leverage that a handful of stars, I would think, could bring to a, a project. Yeah, the inclusion writer, you know, was inspired by Francis, Francis McDormand, you know, um, a few years ago during her famous, uh, you know, Ox, o Oscar speech. And I was, you know, in the audience and I heard, and I was like, oh man, okay. There's something, you know, in writing that, that we can actually, you know, put into play. I was like, okay, cool. So, and that was something that, you know, we, we you know, my team started to build upon and, um, and we made that, you know, part of our, you know, our company policy. And that's something that, you know, just kind of, you know, tries to, you know, raise the accountability, you know, of, um, of our partners with Outlier Society. And, um, and, and, it's, and it's been very successful. It's been adopted uh, on every project thus far uh, since, since we put that in place. And uh, we'll continue to do so moving forward. So it's, uh, um, yeah, it's definitely something I'm proud of. And, you know, we're taking steps in the right direction. A long way to go, a lot of work to do, but but I think if we continue to lead by example, um, and you know, one step, one foot in front of the other, you know, when it's all said and done, we'll look up and be like, okay, you know, we did something. Good for you for using your position for for good that way. It's it's funny to hear you talk about the people you looked up to growing up, and I'm thinking back to your youth, your childhood in Newark, New Jersey, and how you got from where you were in Newark to modeling and acting. What was, the, what was the leap for you? How did that young kid at 11 years old hop into modeling? And eventually that was sort of the road to show business. Uh, it was my mom, you know? My mom really uh, got me into it. She, uh, you know, randomly, uh, you know, at a doctor's appointment, the receptionist had two little boys who were, you know, you know were in the industry, you know, uh, that were, were models at the time. And was like, you know, you should bring your, you know, your sons with you too, you know, with, with me and, you know, crash this audition. I crashed this audition and ended up booking it. Got in trouble because I didn't have any <laughs> representation or whatever the case is. And then, uh, and, and honestly, you know, the rest was history. You know, um, had a backstage newspaper down at Penn Station, randomly looked up a manager that had took out an ad, you know, for open calls, went in, auditioned. She signed me that day and we were going out on, uh, you know, go sees and auditions and stuff at you know, 10, 11, 12. And then it just one, you know, one small success to another, one step, you know, one stepping stone to, to another one. I just kind of just kept going. Sometimes you just got to like walk your path, you know, you don't really know where it's going to end up. And then you start to learn and you get to another level and you, you assess and you learn and you build and your confidence and you continue to grow and, just figure it out and it's just kind of always been like following my gut my intuition but i you know i credit my mom for sure uh of getting me started and pushing me where i am was that even on your radar though michael as a kid i know you love sports you're a good athlete was that something that you thought of like oh maybe someday i'll try actor or was it just that out of the blue out of the blue no it was no it was no thought at all honestly <laughs> i was uh enjoying you know sports and and just hanging out with my friends and you know just live it. You know, you're a kid at that point. You know, I mean, I guess some some kids know exactly what they want to do at a young age, but I always loved, you know, um, you know, animation and movies and television shows. You know, I was always enter entertained by that. So um, it was just, I guess, it's a natural evolution. than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now. 
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. By the man, the All right, it just did too. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Most people point to your performance on The Wire as sort of the breakthrough, playing Wallace. How big of that, how big a deal was that in your life, in your career? Did that give you the taste of, okay, I think I can do this for a living? Yeah, that was uh, that was when I really fell in love with acting. That's when I was around, you know, um, a lot of veteran actors that, you know, like you know Idris Elba, you know Dominic West, uh, J D Williams, Andre Royo, like those guys really um, sat me down and had conversations with me on set, and it was like, hey, you can you can this could be a career for you, you know, if you continue to, you know, if you if you if you're serious about it and you you really you really keep uh, working at it, and. Uh, that was when I first started to like, you know, really look at it differently than just, oh, I'm getting out of school and I could, you know, and I'm, and I'm, uh, you know, you know, like, oh, just, you know, yeah, I just looked at it more as a business that type of way, and then from then, uh, falling in love with acting, you know, um, just was my thing. And then a crazy connection on All My Children, where you actually replaced Chadwick Boseman, who had become one of your great friends. What was that experience like on All My Children? Yeah, I mean, that's where the work ethic kicked in. You know, we would do so many episodes a week, you know, and um, just like, we would just like, you know, we would crank them out. It, it was a lot, uh, you know, you just always had to be prepared. So I think that's where I really got my acting school. You know, I think that was when I really kind of started to uh, uh, get my reps in, you know, I guess, as an actor. And, it, you know, in hindsight, you know, obviously, you know, with Chadwick of it all, when we first kind of, you know, uh, first, first met, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, it's wild. It's wild. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when you think about what came for you guys later with one of the biggest movies in the history of Hollywood and Black Panther, to build that relationship coming off of All My Children, it's got to be crazy. What did he mean to you as a friend? No, I mean, you know, he's a he's a special person, you know, and it's you know, it's it's a it's a tragic loss, you know, for all of us, you know, for me, um, you know, uh, our community, you know. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, we're still dealing with it, you know. I think we're still processing, you know. I think it comes in waves, but you know his legacy that he left behind, the um, the impact that he's made on so many you know people around the world, you know his family. Um, he lives forever, you know. Um, you know, he, he has an incredible body of work to be able to you know that we can reminisce and you know and get a chance to. Uh, you know, see pieces of him, but but he but he's uh, he's still with us. You know what I mean? His his uh, he, he's he's still around. So you, he motivates and inspires me. So it's it's cool. Were you guys? I interviewed Chadwick right in the middle of Black Panther mania. I think you guys had just come back from South Korea or something. And he just plopped down across and was like, oh, just on this whirlwind as the movie was catching fire. Could you guys believe in that moment? Not just how big it was at the box office, but what a cultural force it had become around the world. I mean, I think we were at that point. We were constantly taking it in from city to city, from country to country, you know, really be like, wow, okay, this is the reaction that we're getting from people. You know, this, the kids, the, um, you know, it's really all about the, the children and the kids, man, to see those look, the looks on their faces. 
um, you know, of admiration and just, you know, and, you know, and just happiness and oh wow, like just to know that type of impact we're making um, was uh, was really special. You know, a time in my life I'll never forget. So it was it was a lot of fun. For what it's worth, my kids still say your line when you took the mask from the museum. You said, "No, nah, I'm just feeling it. I just want this." <laughs> they still drop that around the house. <laughs> oh man, that's cool. See, stuff like that is cool, man. That's that's uh, that's what it's all about. They just drop it in. Um, am I right in, in reading your story, Michael? That before Friday Night Lights, when you'd gone out to L.A., it was a bit of a struggle for you, even with the success of The Wire and the other things you'd done, that you were wondering whether or not maybe this was the right thing and you even considered going back home to Jersey? Yeah, you know, nothing's guaranteed, right? So I, even with the success of, you know, The Wire and, you know, All My Children and all that good stuff, you know, there's a lot of talented actors out there. You know, there's a lot of that, that, that don't, you know, for whatever reason, kind of make it over that hump, you know? Um, and that show, The Wire, kind of, in real time, it wasn't as popular as it was after right. the show was over. So, you know, doors started opening up, the right people were watching the shows that I was doing, you know, so slowly uh, things started to catch on. But at first when I got out here, you know, it's you know, life of an actor, you know, you're trying to, you know, you try to put a string of jobs together where you can like, you know, survive and stay out here long enough until you can actually figure out what your career is going to be or what projects you can actually, um, you know, uh, live off of, you know, so I think, you know, in the beginning, you know, I just knew there was a, I had a threshold as a moment, right? <laughs> but it's so crazy, like, you know, they say, like, right when you get ready to quit, you know, that's the moment. If you just keep going a little bit further, you would, you would have, you would have made it, you know? So it's a little bit of that, you know, you had that doubt for whatever reason, you just continue to push through and, you know, you know, and here I am. So it's, uh, Obviously, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, not everybody who does well on a TV show keeps pushing, though. You know, sometimes that's the moment in time and that's the thing they did. But you kept going with Fruitvale and with Creed and all these films. At what point did you feel like you were a movie actor, really? Because you'd had success in television. When did you feel like, OK, now this is my thing. I'm in movies. You know, Fruitvale for me was the first time that, I, you know, that answered a lot of questions and as far as like carrying a film, you know, in a movie. Um, but, you know, I still, you know, you know, it's, it's a, I'm a real chill guy, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes I gotta, you know, I gotta re remind myself, you know what I'm saying? Of, uh, you know, the, the blessings and accomplish that, accomplishments that I've had thus far that, uh, but yeah, it's a, I don't believe my own hype. I don't drink the Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just, I, just, I just do the work, man, and try to tell honest stories. And I'm, and I'm happy that, you know, I'm able to make an impact on people and that like, people enjoy watching my work, you know, and uh, I continue to kind of have that attitude and point of view on it, you know. And part of that progression now is you're going to direct Creed Three, which is amazing. Your directorial debut. I know you're being directed as we speak by Denzel Washington. Is he giving you any pointers on how to do this? Yeah, everybody is, man. I'm, 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 uh, I'll be a fool not to listen to, you know, <laughs> You know, like the greats, you know, and, and Denzel has so many gems and wisdoms to to, to, to give. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to telling the story and finally stepping behind the camera. Uh, I feel like I've been uh, in my head secretly, you know, observing from that from that type of uh, perspective for a long time and, you know, waiting for the right thing or the right opportunity, you know, the right story to be able to tell. And I, I can't think of a better one than than. Uh, and Adonis and Creed, so I'm really, I'm really excited about this. Is that going to be a tough thing to do, where you've got to see 360 degrees of the film, and then all of a sudden you got to grease up and get, can get in the ring? <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be difficult. I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be challenging. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's. That's just what it is. Uh, but I look forward to it. You know, um, it, it's something that, you know, I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. I don't think you're never fully ready for it, but I'm a I'm a jump in the deep end type of guy. So, you know, here we go. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. High forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. 
Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. You, it's funny to hear you say you are a chill guy and you don't get swept up in all the things that have come your way. So how do you react when something like people's sexiest man alive comes to you? I just smile, you? man. Hey, look, just <laughs> smile and enjoy it. Trust me, I got enough people around me, my friends and family, who give me enough sh- that, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's you know they 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 keep me they keep me they keep me pretty grounded and humble. But it's, it's it's all fun. You know it's a big target. Imagine all the group chats and all your oh. friends and everything that you do is because the sex is made alive. It's like yeah, okay, it's annoying after a while. But I imagine, cool. imagine on one hand it's an honor, on the other hand you go oh I'm gonna hear from everybody. Exactly. <laughs> I mean my, my mom and my aunties, you know, and all my you know all my like you know all the women in my family is it's it's it's. it's <laughs> It's gold. You know, everybody <laughs> else, it's dark. You, it does seem to me, though, over the last few years, you've become more comfortable with the, the celebrity thing. Is that fair to say? You've been more open with your private life and you're in love right now and you've been very open about that. Are you? Is it easier for you to kind of let that wall down a little bit? You mean, I mean, I think, you know, just understanding the industry and all the, the things that come along with it, you know, it's all, it's, it's not all glitter and gold and, um, and, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a transition, you know, but still very private, you know, still, you know, keep a lot of, you know, stuff to myself, you know, but there's certain areas of my life that, you know, I chose to, to, to put out there, uh, more of a way to be like, all right, it's there. Now it's, we go all move on, right? And just continue to like, yeah, like we can we can move on. Like it doesn't have to be the, the 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 private eye trying to dig and find out what's the, every little thing. So, um, but yeah, I'm happy, man. And, and it's uh, and I and I, and I probably always will, you know, keep keep that part of my life, you know, what I'm saying to myself. But but it's uh, you know, nobody's hiding anything. Well, that's interesting that you say that because a lot of people notice that with Lori, you've kind of gone on Instagram. And it sounds like it's a bit of a strategy to demystify it. No, nah, not a strategy, man. It's just more or less like this is what it is, and all right, let's keep it moving. Like it's it's uh that's that I mean that's really it, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, the film appreciate Without it. Remorse is incredible. We didn't get around to the rivalry with Behringer in Newark, but we're, we'll hit that next time. We'll, we'll get that on the next one. All right, Michael. Thanks for the time. Congrats. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. All right, see ya. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever all played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the wrath of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. That's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. Oh, How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather app. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look, look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day.
Welcome to Today All Day. There's nothing worse than like a chewy bit of pancetta in your carbonara. It's like such a smooth, delicious sauce, and then all of a sudden you're like chewing gum. But it's meat. Yum. Meat gum. Coming soon. Whenever I travel to Italy, I make it a point to fly in and out of Rome because the food there is just so good. It's also the home to some of my favorite markets and restaurants. Romans are artisans at taking just a few simple ingredients and combining them to make really impactful, flavorful dishes. Today, I'm making three of my favorite dishes inspired by the Eternal City. First, I'm cooking up a creamy pasta carbonara. Then for a little greenery, roasted asparagus, but cacio e pepe style. And for the main, chicken salt and boca in a buttery wine sauce. Now let's head on over to Rome. Rome is famous for its pasta dishes, four in particular, pasta alla gricia, pasta alla matriciana, cacio e pepe, and my personal favorite, pasta carbonara. What sets carbonara apart from the rest are that it's made using eggs, which turn into this velvety, luscious, super decadent sauce. The first thing we need to do is dice up some pancetta. So traditionally, guanciale would be used here. Guanciale is cured pork cheek. It's super fatty and a little bit more gamey. It's just still sort of hard to find here. So I am using pancetta instead. It is different. It's not as gamey. It is also cured, but it comes from the pork belly. It also doesn't have the same seasonings that guanciale does, which tend to include herbs like sage, rosemary. In a pinch, you also can use really high-end bacon, but it is going to change the flavor profile because it's smoked. So I have my pancetta. I purchased it like this. They're about quarter inch pieces. You can buy diced pancetta in this store. It loses its flavor when it's diced, but it is a lot more convenient. If you can find this, I would use this. And I threw it in the freezer for about 10, 15 minutes, which will help the fat solidify and make it easier for me to cut this into slices and then dice. So this is plenty of pancetta, it's about four ounces worth. And I'm going to show you an easy trick to properly render fatty cured meat like this. If you've ever tried to crisp pancetta, but it was still super chewy, it's because you cooked it too fast and the fat didn't have time to properly render. So one way to ensure really nice, tender, properly rendered pancetta is to actually cover it, barely cover, I should say, with just some cold tap water. And what happens is, as the water begins to boil, it begins to melt the fat and will almost cook, it will cook the pancetta through so that it gets nice and tender and then eventually the water will begin to evaporate, leaving behind the rendered fat and will crisp it up. So you'll have nice tender interiors and crispy outside. So I'm going to bring this to a boil. We want this to evaporate fast, but just keep an eye on it because once the water's gone, it's going to start to saute and you wanna make sure you don't burn your pancetta. You can see that the fat is really starting to render now and has kind of made its way around the sides of the pan and we'll just let this keep going. It's like a Roman mosaic art piece. You can also tell that the pancetta has rendered because the fatty pieces are almost transparent. At this point, keep stirring it so that it gets nice and crispy all over. All this liquid remaining that's all the rendered fat. That is not water anymore. Mm. This rendered fat is the key to why my carbonara is so good. It's all flavor. You wanna get it really crispy, really golden, almost to the point where it's borderline burnt. Smells heavenly at this point too. Okay. This looks great. 
gonna cut the heat, grab a bowl and a slotted spoon, and transfer the pancetta to a bowl. This will stop the cooking process. And last but not least, I'm gonna reserve a tablespoon worth of this rendered grease. This rendered fat is gonna get added into our sauce to add that pancetta salty flavor at the end. So I have a large, clearly large pot here of boiling water, and we are going to generously season that. Once it comes back to a boil, time to drop our spaghetti, one pound. Do you wanna cook this pretty much till it's al dente? Meanwhile, let's work on the sauce. So I need six egg yolks. These are large eggs that I've allowed to come to room temperature. And that's sort of important for this just because you're going to be adding your hot pasta right into the eggs. So the closer they are in temperature, the less of a chance you'll have of curdling. You also want to use really good fresh eggs here since the only cooking of the egg is the pasta doing so, the warmth, the heat of the pasta. And save the egg whites for a baking project. Lastly, one whole egg right on in. Don't neglect your pasta, give it a stir -sies every now and then. So I have my six egg yolks and one whole egg. I'll just give those a light beating. And while I'm whisking, I'm gonna take my reserved pancetta renderings and just drizzle that in. It's pretty cool at this point. You don't wanna add it while it's super hot. Just whisk really well to combine. Make sure we get all of that. It's all flavor. Up next, some Pecorino Romano cheese which is a cheese that originates from the area, uh, Lazio, where Rome sits. Most of it is now actually made in Sardinia. It's super delicious and salty, and it's one of my favorite cheeses in the world. I'm adding three quarters of a cup, so it's a fairly generous amount of cheese. And this cheese, along with the pancetta and the renderings, are going to really help season the sauce. This cheese is one of the most pronounced flavors of this sauce, so you really want to be using the real deal. Going to add about a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground pepper. Whisk that in to combine. And that's all there is to the sauce. When the pasta hits the eggs, it begins to slowly cook them, and that's what creates this creamy sauce. There is no dairy, no cream, milk, it's all the egg yolks just slowly beginning to cook that creates that velvety sauce. So if you go to a restaurant and it says cream, it's not a true carbonara. I'm sure it's still delicious, I mean, cream. I'm just cooking the pasta until it's al dente, Unlike most sauces that we finish in a pot, I'm gonna finish the dish right in this bowl. So when it comes out, the pasta needs to be perfectly cooked. So the pasta is very close to being ready, a nice, perfect al dente. And at this point, the only important ingredient left is speed. Everything from this point on needs to happen really quickly to make sure that one, we don't curdle the eggs, and two, our sauce stays nice and luxurious and doesn't set too much before we serve it. So, are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Grab as much of the spaghetti as possible into the bowl. Into the bowl and start to stir. And you can see how creamy it's starting to get already. And at this point, you're looking for just a nice creamy sauce, but you still want it to coat the pasta. You can add a splash of the pasta water if you need it. I don't think I need it at this point. The pancetta goes right on in. Oh my God, this just looks so good. At this point, you can taste it for seasoning. 
but if you seasoned your water well and there's so much salt in the sauce, you really shouldn't need it. Let's plate it up. I'm gonna grab some, lock my tongs, set it in a ladle and twist to make a nest. Just keep twisting and then right onto a plate. Just a couple of last finishing touches. Some more pecorino cheese. I'm gonna freshly grate some this time. And just a little bit more black pepper. Look how pretty, how simple that was to get on the dish. And all that's left is to taste it. You have to serve this right away. Mm. It is so perfectly seasoned. It's so simple. You would swear that this has a million calories worth of cream in it, and it doesn't. It's just so delicious. This is what I love about Roman cuisine. Just a handful of ingredients making the most flavorful, delicious dish. So it's so good. Truly. Fantastic. 10 out of 10. Two thumbs up. Six stars. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun, bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. Cacio e Pepe is normally associated with pasta, but for this recipe, I'm going to be taking those flavors and roasting some asparagus with the cheese and the pepper. Makes a perfect side for today's meal. So for this recipe, I like to use a really thin stalk asparagus called pencil asparagus. It's really easy to find in the summer. It can be a little bit more difficult to find the rest of the year, but you never know. The only thing you'll have to adjust is cooking times if you have the thicker stalks. The first thing I'm going to do is trim off the woody bottoms of the stalk and discard. Ta-da. And then onto a foiled lined sheet pan, you don't have to line it with foil. I just like to do so because it helps with cleanup a little later on, and I'm lazy. And just in a thin, evenish layer, just kind of lay your asparagus out onto the sheet pan. And then in true Roman style, literally just a few ingredients. Starting with extra virgin olive oil, I'm gonna add three tablespoons. And this is a great eyeball it recipe. I do give the measurements for this, but feel free to eyeball it. Quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, and last but not least, a packed quarter cup of freshly grated pecorino. And it is a pretty generous amount when you pack it and freshly grate it. It's very fluffy. Then just give it a little toss with your hands to coat it with all of these delicious ingredients. That is literally all there is to this dish. All that's left is to put it in a 400 degree oven and roast it until fork tender, which will be about 16, 18 minutes.
Look how great this looks. Nice and tender. And you can cook it to your preferred doneness. Some people like it to be a little bit crispier and have more of a snap, I should say. Really love roasting vegetables. It's a great way to bring out their flavor. And you could even do this recipe with broccoli or cauliflower would be really nice. Okay. And just a couple of finishing touches. Some more cheese, because you could never have enough cheese. And roasted vegetables can really handle seasoning. So it may look like a lot, but it could use it. And then just another couple of cracks of fresh, freshly cracked black pepper right on top. That's it. I think I need to take one of these and give it a taste. Mm. It's just such a simple dish, but that combination of the salty cheese and the spicy black pepper is just amazing pairing. That is what makes Cacio e Pepe such a delicious dish. So good. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Then fun, bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it is the for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Then fun, bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Feel salt and boca is a quintessential Roman dish. However, I am going to be Americanizing it by using some chicken instead. I actually prefer chicken, it's easy to find, and it's cheaper than veal. But the flavors are still there, and I promise this dish is so impressive looking that it's great for entertaining, but simple enough to serve on any weekday evening. In front of me, I have eight very thinly sliced chicken collets, which I purchased just like this at my local supermarket. It is very important that they're thinly sliced, but the first step is to season both sides of the chicken with salt. I'm being fairly generous with my seasoning. And now I'm going to one by one wrap the chicken in some prosciutto di parma. So I have thinly sliced prosciutto. I'm just gonna work one cutlet at a time. So place the prosciutto over the chicken cutlet and cover as much as you can and press it on to kind of just glue it together. Then I flip it over and take any of the excess and just wrap it around the underside. Okay. Now working on the prosciutto side, I'm going to take two sage leaves 
and I'm going to secure them over the top with a toothpick. Sage smells so delicious. I just love that aroma. So just thread the toothpick on through the chicken underneath. And then I like to just go back and make sure that the leaf is nice and flat. And that is our first cutlet. And you wanna just repeat the process with all the remaining chicken cutlets. Halfway there. Okay, and the last one. The last thing we need to do before we actually cook the chicken is just dredge it in some flour. Make sure you get it fully coated and then gentle shake to remove any excess. Just work gently so that you don't disrupt the sage leaves. Okay, and the last one. All right, I'm going to give my hands a quick rinse and grab a couple of ingredients so we can finish our salt and boca. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just did. My chicken is all dredged up. All that's left to do is to cook it. So I'm starting with a high-sided, fairly large skillet. I'm gonna put that over medium heat. The heat is very important for this recipe. We want to cook the chicken so that the exterior gets nice and crispy, but doesn't overcook. But then the chicken also has the opportunity to cook through. That's why we're using these thin cutlets. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil and just warm that up over the medium heat. You wanna cook the chicken in batches, adding more oil as necessary until all of it is cooked. You don't wanna overcrowd your pan. So I'm just going to do two cutlets to start. So you wanna put the prosciutto and sage side down because we really wanna get a nice crispy crust on that. It's gonna take about two and a half to three minutes per side and I'm looking for the sides to get nice and caramelized, and you'll actually see the chicken beginning to turn more opaque as it cooks. Now you wanna cook it on the other side for another two to three minutes until it's fully cooked through. The sage not only looks pretty, it infuses this whole dish with a punch of delicious flavor. Transfer it right to a serving platter, and then continue cooking your chicken. 
can almost smell the saltiness of the prosciutto. It's a very distinct aroma and the earthiness of the sage, just a great combination. Okay, halfway there. It's very important to not rush this cooking process. If you do it on too high heat, you're gonna crisp up your prosciutto, but your chicken isn't going to be able to fully cook through. Okay, our last batch of cutlets are ready. And I just keep piling these on top so that they stay warm, but we're gonna finish it with a pan sauce that'll warm them right back up too. Isn't that beautiful? Salting boca is typically paired with a white wine hand sauce. I do mine just a little bit differently, but the flavors are all still there. I'm gonna take a half a cup of some good dry white wine. I like to use a Pinot Grigio. And we're gonna use that to deglaze the pan. All those brown bits are from the prosciutto and from the chicken and it's all flavor. So just stir it to melt right into the wine. And you wanna reduce this for about a minute or two. So fragrant. Now that that's reduced, I'm going to add a cup of chicken stock or broth. And I'll bring that to a simmer. Typically this pan sauce is very loose um, and runny super whiny. I kind of tone it down with the sauce. I also add a little bit of flour at this point because I like a sauce that sticks to the cutlets, similar to you would find in like a marsala or franchise. So I reserved one tablespoon of the dredging flour and I'm going to add three tablespoons of unsalted butter to it. I'm doing this for two reasons. First, the butter is going to add a delicious richness to this dish, but I'm also going to create a paste with the flour. If I were to add the flour in by itself, it would clump. And it's nice and soft. And I'm going to just gently kind of massage the flour into the butter. You can use your hands for this too. It's just a little messy. This is something you see in French cooking called Bermonier. And I'm just going to add this butter flour paste right to the skillet. And as the butter melts, the flour will begin to incorporate and slightly thicken the sauce. So you can already see how the sauce has slightly thickened. The last thing to do is to taste it for seasoning. salty now, just like me. All that's left to do is pour this gorgeous sauce right over the chicken. Dinner is served. I think I need to taste this now. Carefully remove the toothpicks. They're not edible or tasty. What a really good bite. It is so good. This is why the Romans are just geniuses. They take just a few ingredients, the saltiness of the prosciutto, the earthiness of the sage, and combine it with the white wine, and is all I can say. So good. So simple, so pretty. Any guest would be super impressed by this dish. Good morning, everybody. I'm Al Roker, and this is Today's Show Confidential. This week, 
Hoda Kotb sitting down with Chrissy Teigen. Having this period of time and time to digest it all and to look back and to realize that honestly there is always so much time to grow and to learn mm-hmm. and to become more empathetic. Lady A joining us in Studio 1A. Everyone I think changed a little during this pandemic yeah. and everyone seems to come on as talked about like a different feel they have to their music. It was our therapy. I think it was a way for us to really start to process what was happening. And we are celebrating 100 days to the Winter Olympics. We'll be watching. Yes, we will. Come on, Kier. Kier, go skate off. Skate off into the sun. Are you on skates, Kier? I'm not. I'm afraid, my friend. I'm going to get out there after this. All right. right. Thank you. You had 100 days to make the team, okay? (laughs) And with just 24 hours before our Halloween show, our transformation will soon begin. And it will be spooktacular. That's right. And now, here are your hosts, Libby Listo Lantern, Dracumas, and Pete Scream. <laughs> Happy Thursday, you guys. Why are we back on Zoom? No, I don't know. We, we, hey. we're, we, it's an old, it's throwback episode. I mean, it's a throwback to 2020. Yeah, uh, well, the, the truth is we had a meeting that conflicted with our live slot today. We had work had to get in the way of our radio show, man. I know. It's, it's a bunch of nonsense, if you ask me, these meetings. These damn it, meetings to put on the Life stage. is all about choices, and I think we chose poorly. <laughs> we definitely chose poorly. But it is convenient just to hop onto Zoom and hang sure. with it. It is. Better well, than nothing, right? I do, I do miss the lovely, the, the ambiance of the Sirius serious XM studios across the street. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, how's the uh, office today, guys? Is it um, Halloween a buzz? It is buzzing. It's buzzing. There are a bunch of people here because they're doing rehearsals for Halloween. Right now. Right this second. This is happening as we speak. And uh, they're, you know, we actually have to bring people in for it, right? So some of the people working on Halloween are like across the country. So we brought them in and we're, you know, it's still within the COVID protocol protocols, but we're, uh, we have more people, I think, working this week than we've had in, I don't know, probably a year or so. Maz and I just had a meeting of five people in a room. Yeah. Oh, that that's a record, actually. Mm-hmm. It is. Uh, let me guess. The director? No, it was not. It was no, just- unrelated to Halloween. Oh. It's a special meeting with it. Really? I have a little Today Show Confidential right now, too, by the way. What do you got? So I am sitting in order to make the broadcast even more special. I sit away from my desk so that people can pop me while I'm doing this. So I'm in a comment room in the back. And to my left, in front of me, are all the Halloween costumes. No. I'm looking at them as we speak. Well, you say a little more secretive about that. <laughs> Why are they out in open? In a, glass office. in a glass office, by the way. In a glass office. They are covered. But, um, at the moment, over here. That's true. Now you have a rush of citizens into the building. <laughs> we have security measures in place. Uh, how do they look? Yeah, cool. I was just thinking how well preserved and nice everything looks. It's now, not like my closet. Everything is clean. Now here's a question for you guys. Mass, are we using uh, Saturday Night Live this year? Are we using Saturday Night Live for the costumes? Yes. Oh, 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 I believe so. Yes, I believe we're using the costume folks that we use in the past. We are. Yeah. That is one of the I would say perks of working at NBC Universal for Halloween is we have access to probably the greatest wardrobe department in entertainment. Really true. Mm-hmm. It's so funny you say that, Libby. We're watching the episode, the John, the the Jason Sudeikis episode from last weekend, and and Keenan Thompson was wearing I don't know, like a funny suit or something, and we're watching. My wife goes. Where do they get these like costumes? And I'm like, SNL has everything. And I don't mm-hmm. know if they have it stored from being on the air for 50 years or if they just know where to get it or a combination of the two, but they've got anything you would ever want, they have. I think it's a combination of the two. I do I, too. I think I've been through, have you done that backstage tour of their costume area? No. It's insane. It's like, um, rows and rows and rows and categories. I mean, it's kind of the world's greatest vintage store, honestly. And I think it's a mix. I think if they have to source something, they can do it instantly. Uh, one of the, my favorite details was um, when Savannah did that town hall with President Trump, 
Kate McKinnon played her yeah. that week, and they and actually played Savannah, yeah. Savannah for her suit. So they even go as far as to ask the person that actually wore the outfit to to grab it from them. It's right. authenticity. Yeah, it's true. Well, I, you, this, tomorrow's show will be authentic to some degree in terms of in terms of costumes sure. and outfits and everything like that. But I do think that one of the things I'm most looking forward to is the anchors are all in on this one. They really are, huh? Is it more so than in other years, huh? Feels that way a little bit, I think. I, I, maybe there's just such a yearning for everybody to be together and have some fun. You know, I think last year we were, um, I think everyone was still nervous, right? Because we it was still mid-pandemic and there was no vaccinations. And I think everyone was a little nervous about getting through it without anybody getting sick or getting anyone, you know, on the cruise sick. I think this year it feels a little bit more, um, they're a little bit more open to sort of like, okay, let's lose, let's let loose here. Yeah, uh, Carson really sold it this morning. He said it's like our prom. <laughs> it's true. It yeah. is. It's our it's our annual prom. Uh, they so if you had to pick without revealing the costume now, guys, who do you think is going to be the sort of standout winner? There's always one. Chanel's kind of won the past two years because she danced as Janet Jackson, Tina Turner. What's your what talent are you going for this year for for the winning costume? a good question um i think maybe this is just my own personal thing i think um willie and carson i'm looking forward to seeing them oh interesting okay yeah that'll be fun i was gonna go with jenna and savannah but i can see where you're coming from yeah they'll both be fun very very different but very fun both uh buzzy right exactly exactly yeah Um, i'm gonna go with the queen of halloween chanel is gonna pull it off like she does every year. Has she been practicing? Oh yeah. And we've heard okay. she kills it. We've heard she kills it, Libby. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. She's the best. She's, okay, she's gonna win again. I'm not surprised. Um, Maz, have you screened the tapes? I've screened not all. No, we I screened a couple of them, but not all of them. So okay. I'm a lot of them. So I had a conversation. Malia and Christine are producing. They are still. A lot of it's still being edited today. For whatever reason, I don't know what it was this year but it kind of the schedule got backed up a little bit. So they shot later than they normally shoot. Oh, that's a little down to the wire. Yeah, it is. It's close. They're, they're literally, I asked them this morning and they're like, Scott Goldberg, who's one of our best editors, is cutting a bunch of things today, like at, like crashing them today. Oh, wow. Well, that's um, that's good. And what time does rehearsal start tomorrow, Mr. Breen? Uh, it starts at 5 a.m. 5 a.m. we go, uh, we were out, uh, on the plaza rehearsing. Five? Sorry. Yeah. That sounds earlier than usual. Uh, it's five. I bet it slides to five thirty, but Debbie said five before. We say okay. we say five, and then it starts at five fifteen or five twenty, and that gives us some wiggle room. We well, we have to be back in order to tape some other things at six. So if you have a limited time. So Maz, um, how does it feel to pass over Halloween to Pete? The the, the, the passing of the production baton is glorious. It's been glorious, Libby. Because yeah, um, the weight of the, weight of the Halloween, guy. exactly. The weight of the Halloween world is on Pete's shoulders tomorrow, and and just so people have a sense of it, because we tape a lot of the stuff in advance, so it all has to time out perfectly in order for it to fit within the show. And Pete's already, I can see the sweat right now. There yeah. was a great moment this week, which I told you about, Libby. But Maz was explaining to Grace, one of our coordinating producers, about how Halloween. <laughs> was his most stressful day of the year and how he like got so anxious about it and and how now he, he's so excited that he doesn't have to worry about that part of it and th- that I do and then I kind of I was laughing and then I was walking away and Matt says where, where are you going where are you going are you leaving and I said no I have to go to a holiday scheduling meeting and he goes that was my second least favorite thing of the year <laughs> Holiday scheduling, followed by Matt's third ho- holiday tapings. Holiday tapings. That's coming up soon, too. That's headed your way, too. I can't wait. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. 
Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch nightly news, kids edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just me too. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. From October 15th or so to, to December 26th is the hardest part of the Today Show year, probably. Yeah, oh, I would even I would even shorten it, Libby, from October 15th to December 15th, because right. yeah. from December 15th, almost all the anchors are on vacation starting like Nobody's that, here. That, whenever that Friday is like, that's when it, they, they all start going away. So we have, but that presents time. its own problems too, though, Maz, because like, then we need to fill all these, we still have shows. So we yeah. have to fill all these hours with well, nobody then here. There, then there's the December 26th week where Maz turns and goes, I'm sorry, who are you? Can you help me with the graphics? Yeah. <laughs> I don't well, know that's me this year. That's <laughs> <Keith Michelin. laughs> not Maz. Well, t- traditionally, Maz would say he, he looked around and he didn't know one single person. Yeah, there, there, was, there, were t- there were times where I literally was introducing myself to people in the control room. Like, I don't know who you are, but welcome well, aboard. And honestly, those those people every year, thanks to them for working that week because it's, oh, yeah. it's not the uh, easiest thing to do. But um, it is funny when Maz doesn't have his regular people around him, <laughs> how he figures his way through it. It's true. We were, do- we were doing the anchor schedule for holidays too. And you first, I, I was I was trying to get through it and I was like, why are we why are we so short all these days? They're like, um, Dylan's on maternity leave too. Oh, so yeah. like I it's sort of like normally if Al's off, you have Dylan, but now when Al wants off, Dylan's off as well. So we sort of have to like go to the go to sort of our bench here at NBC and it's just like yeah. you know, it's it well, was it's not a normal year. It's amazing what uh it's amazing what goes into making uh the today show during the holidays <laughs> it's a mm-hmm. lot it is true uh, and we're also one of the things that we've been talking about is we normally would have all these musical performances for christmas music right we have that this year in studio because we're not allowed to because of COVID protocols well that's some time that needs to be filled yes it is yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of it can we just put the yule log up oh that's not a bad idea I love the Yule log. Love the Yule log. So do I. And let's put the Yule log in the big one A wall at some point, Mez. Just have it stare at it for a while. I like that idea. That would be fun. What do you think Marco would say if we we told him that our eight thirty was going to turn into the Yule log during the holidays? Marco, our ratings guru, I think would say uh, (laughs) multiple minutes of low retention. I yeah, disagree. Or, I think it would do well. Uh, yeah, if it did, yeah, if it did well, he'd be fine with it. Or we, got, we got bigger minutes. problems. We got bigger problems with the Yule log outrates our normal programming. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All 
for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just did. Uh, so the 830 today, guys, um, switching topics because uh, I don't want to miss it. But today is 100 days to the Winter Olympics. Mm -hmm. How you wanna crazy. Know, you want to know a secret, Libby? Yeah. Yes. It's really 99. It's not. Oh, 99. 99 days. Well, technically 100 days. But because of the weirdness of the time zones, it was it's sort not. of like both days. Yeah. And today was the day that we could get the athletes. And yesterday we couldn't. So we determined today was really officially 100 days. Well, isn't there a weird thing where the Olympics start on a Thursday night, but the yeah. ceremonies on a Friday? So it's all kind of... Yep. There's like time zone thing. And then there was the issue about when the games actually begin versus the opening ceremony. So there was some, we had some wiggle room in determining 100 days. Well, the Winter Olympics uh, coming so close to the Summer Olympics is very strange. I have to say. It, when I heard Here's something interesting. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, when I heard the Olympic music on the show this morning, I, I thought, wait, we just got past that period. You just got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Today, Jared pointed out, today is 99 days or 100 days until the Winter Games. It has only been 81 days since the Summer Games. <laughs> wow. Well, that actually seems 81 days. I mean, it seems like it was just yesterday, the Summer Games. It's two it's two months. Days? Oh, Almost wow. Three months, yeah. Um, so what'd you guys think? Michaela Schifrin looks ready to go. She does. You know, what's funny. Libby, um, Savannah today said when they were doing, she was, I love the winter game. She's like, she did. Yeah. And it's yeah, funny. she did. I, I find them to be like, I don't want to say lower profile, but I do a lot of my memories of the Olympics for the most part are summer games and not winter. games. Definitely. Although ice skating is kind of big. Ice skating is big. Um, remembering, hockey. There's some things. Yeah, hockey, ice skating, skiing, Bodie Miller. I yeah. wonder why Savannah prefers Winter Olympics. That's interesting. That's really funny when she said that. I, I was, I was, because I always think when I think the Olympics, I think of, you know, I, I think of gymnastics. I think of like the dream team. I think of, you know, track and field and Carl Lewis. And just in my head, I mean, there's clearly like the Miracle on Ice and some other things that are wintry. But for the most part, I, I generally think of summer. And she said that and. You know the issue we're the issue we're trying to figure out, Libby, as you know all too well, is sort of what we're going to be able to do and not do over there in Beijing. A lot of the same situation we were in in Tokyo. I was listening to Sean White on the Nine today, and this is his fifth Olympics, which is crazy. That's crazy. He's, he's training right now in the Swiss Alps. Um, his and, shot was awesome. And yeah, it's incredible, and I think. Um, Really, we're hoping that we get access to these athletes. That's going to be the tricky part in COVID because everybody's scattered at the Winter Olympics. I think more so than summer, don't you, Mass? For sure, because everyone's out. Yeah. They have the, what they call the mountain venues, which is like two hours away. And then they've got what's called the ice venues, which are the things in the city, which are, you know, hockey and curling and ice skating and that kind of stuff. I remember in Sochi, uh, they actually physically stood up a village in the mountains. They, they built it. The, yeah. the, a village that didn't exist, if I remember correctly, um, because they had they had to house all the uh, skiers and everybody that was in the mountain zone, and that was a, a fair fair distance from the international broadcast center and where our set was. So the Winter Olympics are a little more just logistically challenging, and now add COVID on top of it. So we're kind of working through some things, as they say. Yeah, I remember when you said I was talking about Sochi, Pete. You'll remember this. 
I vividly remember the people that were in Sochi talking about going for jogs. It was seven. Oh my god! And it was, it was like very warm there. And it was like the worst winter ever on the east. It coast. was a brutal winter here. It was terrible. There was a snowstorm every day, or it was bitter cold. And I remember thinking, you guys were the luckiest people on earth to be. Meanwhile, no one really wants to go to Sochi, Russia. Like it's not no. a, a place where anyone's like dying to go to. But it just so happened with the timing of it that you guys missed a wickedly bad like three weeks ago. I remember watching the show from um, the Sochi newsroom and the bump shot onto the plaza that we would do every day was just horrifically snowy and slushy <laughs> and messy. And it, it never changed the entire Olympics. <laughs> the entire time. You watch that feed. Uh, but it should be interesting to see how Beijing comes together and uh, how we cover these things. And to remind everybody, it's a once in a lifetime situation. It is. We've sure. got the Super Bowl in the middle of the Olympics. Sunday, the middle weekend of the Olympics, that Sunday is Super Bowl Sunday. I mean, that's pretty cool. That is cool. It's what happens once in a lifetime? It's logistically daunting, Libby, but it's cool. Yeah, Pete, why don't we say things like uh, multiple platforms will cover once in a lifetime. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Then fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just been This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, did anybody check us out on the stream this week? No, we were on. Yeah, we were. Wait, so Libby, speaking of the stream, did you hear Michaela Schifrin said, I I, I, I watched, I streamed it on Peacock. Yeah, <laughs> I know. The, the control room like, erupted. Did Libby, did Libby get to Michaela Schifrin? Did Libby get in her head? Hey, Michaela, just say Peacock three times. It doesn't matter in what context. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it's catching It's just catching on like wildfire. <laughs> yep, everybody loves Michaela it. Michaela Schifrin, leading, Michaela. Everybody loves it. leading the Michaela. charge of Peacock. Michaela's a team player. Uh, but no, Today Show Confidential is on the stream, guys. So congrats. By the stream, I have, I have not seen it. Find, Libby, where can we find that stream? Uh, you can find it on today.com slash all day, or you can find it on Peacock. There you go. You so that. multiple places or Roku or Pl Pluto. There's other places. Yeah, you drop on a Pluto and a Roku. Cord cutting. Uh, Ask Jeeves? No. <laughs> Yahoo? No, no, no. That's weird, Pete. How about, Pete. How about on Yahoo? How about on Yahoo? Uh, who knows? There's so many platforms for so many things. I can't keep up. What about uh, Triblets? Uh, don't know what you're talking about. I just made that one up. Okay. How about Roblox, Pete? Roblox, ooh. This Roblox. week, we actually got into a conversation about confusing people because we do every day, but um, Al has two things coming. Al has a cooking show uh, on stream, 
and a cooking podcast. Okay. And they're two totally different things. And they dropped a dropped about the same time. So the stream started to show this week and the podcast starts Monday. So just download everything. That's my message. If you see today's show, just download it. Just say, just say yes. Just say yes. So we we just were laughing. Yes. We were laughing this morning, Levine. We we're in the control room. And normally, so in the breaks, if give people a sense at home, in the breaks is usually when we sort of do our business, right? We're like, we do whatever we need to do. We if they have to retract things for pieces or they have to do shout outs or whatever. And it's gotten to the point where our entire breaks are filled with doing things for all of these other platforms, which is fine, yeah. right? Yeah. But I used to, and Pete has a sense of this too in that role, like he used to kind of have a sense of what it was they were doing, right? The actor, yeah. They just hand him a script and the actor would be like, what is this? And you're like, oh, that's for this. It's, we are past that point now. We literally, right. each other, we're like, we have no idea what this is for. We have no clue. <laughs> cool. They're like trying. Well, Craig is tracking something. Maz goes, what is this? I go, I, I could not tell you what he's tracking right now. Chances, no, are, chances are I would know. So just let me know. I can help you out. Um, there's there's a lot of projects floating around, guys. Content. There, content there is, is king. There is so much content floating around that studio. It is crazy. And it's you. we just have, at a certain point, we've just given up. We're like, we can't. We can't know what this is about. Sorry, we're just sorry. The anchors ask, like, I we don't know. We'll find out. Just please read it. I'd say nine out of ten times I I do, but there, more frequently there's stuff where I'm like, this is I have no idea. And nine it's funny too be, because they're like, <laughs> they're like tracking something for and and this is coming up on today all day. Okay, what's next? Oh, okay. <laughs> hey Barry, congratulations on your retirement. <laughs> <laughs> those are always the ones I never knew what was when we would. Oh, do those are the here. best. Those are my favorite. Right, Al would do a hundred station callouts. Hello, Cleveland. This right. is Al Roker. That's right. Uh, well, uh, we they'll, they'll, are a content the, enterprise. Yeah, if they'll do the, the when they do those affiliate ones. They're literally like Joe Smith, forty years at WTTV in Idaho, Sioux City. How you doing? Love you, love you, love watching you. And then they're done, and we're like, who was that for again? <laughs> Like, I don't know. It's for Joe in in Sioux City. I don't know. What you're listening? Not to mention, the show has changed over the years where if I don't see a shopping segment in the show, I think, did something go wrong? Well, there you go. Shopping every day on the Today Show. The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends in today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. That's just shop today with Jill Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. I purchased something this week on oh, Steals okay. and Deals. I purchased a the leaf blower. Oh, that's really? great. You told me that. You know, it's funny, Maz. Remember, I was always a, an early skeptic of the QR code. Yeah. I thought, oh, you can't put a QR code on the screen. Now I use the QR QR code for everything whenever we shop. It's it's awesome. 
I, I think that's, I think it makes perfect sense and people get what it is and they understand. And also we have, you know, we have internal sort of numbers that indicate what does well and what doesn't. And in our last meeting, Libby, we saw that the shopping does very well. It does very well. It's, it's first of all, it's easy, right? It's okay. not overwhelming. There are five great products that the editors that shop today do the work for you. So you don't have to look, what's the best uh, hair dryer? What's the best right. blanket? They do a lot of the work and then our website's easy. Just go click on it and done. And that's what everybody wants. Maz, I remember I asked you, I said, what would your daughters want out of social media and the Today Show? And you said, ah, probably just to shop yeah. and beauty or whatever, right? A lipstick or a... All, all they want is, and, and they want somebody that they kind of know and trust telling them about it. Yeah, so Katie Ryan, one of our producers, and I always text because almost every shopping segment, one of us will... Oh, I got the dry shampoo, or oh, I got the Revlon. <laughs> it's it's kind of like you, Pete. You got the leaf blower. I, I got the leaf blower. Pete, it's, it's not a, it's not a gas powered leaf blower, is it? No, it's not. I had a gas one that that broke, and I need to do a little work this weekend in the garage to clear some stuff out. And at the end, I want to give a nice. Yeah, I can't wait. Our, our, well, I read science is a lot of towns. My town, they ban gas powered leaf blowers. You have to have like the battery pack. Oh, really? Oh, really? Le leaf blowers are like man candy. I, I oh, love my awesome. leaf blower. I use it to clear off my side. I'll just whip it, like whip it out of the garage and just start blowing off the leaves on the driveway or like on my oh, desk. Yeah. The hell of it. I've Here's used it in the house. Here's a question. Leaf blower or power washer? Oh. Discuss. I, they're both fantastic. I would say leaf blower because it's a little cleaner. The power washer is awesome and it lends itself to my OCD in a very real way. But you've got to like, <laughs> put the hose on it and sometimes it leaks yep. and kind of, if you really do it well, yeah. you will end up soaked using a power washer. Soaked and dirty. Yeah, I agree, Maz. Leaf blower is more efficient for sure. Um, but when you've really successfully power washed something, you can stand back and just yeah. revel in all the glory, but it is a pain to get, to get there. You you got multiple up, right? hoses. Yeah. yeah. Multiple hoses. You've got water everywhere. There's, there's never like fully clean. But I yeah. have to say, when I see a power washer on the streets of New York, I get so excited because oh, New awesome. York is dirty. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody that takes the time to power wash the block, I bow down to you. That is true. And and the thing about the power washers is it really does like we should have a power we should have a power washer in a steals and deals. We gotta get to We should market. actually. Well, you know what? Um I have some Spring. I have some uh inroads to the shop commerce team. So mm -hmm. I will I'll recommend. You know what guy would be. Yes, power washing. Uh, well, we're going to come back with a few more teases for next week, guys. We got to take a quick. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? the vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. News is more than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're going to do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life in prime time and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border, the vaccine mandate? Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Well, guys, uh, this is one of the 
monumental weeks at the Today Show with the Halloween show coming, and we are off to the holiday races. It's it's on. It's official. It's official. No one does the holidays like the Today Show, I will say, from start to finish, and this is the start. It, it, there's no way around it. Halloween's the first big one. We got a big month in November of Thanksgiving. We're already talking about taping the Christmas stuff and getting some Christmas some Christmas content in there. And then, of course, there's the shopping. I mean, nothing says Christmas like shopping. No, and this is now the time of year where Debbie Kosofsky switches from Halloween to right. uh, Thanksgiving. Oh. <laughs> ah. And I will say, breaking Thanksgiving news, I know everyone's worried about Thanksgiving and the Today Show Plaza. We got the okay this morning. Let me, did you see Evan's note? We yep. can have all of our giant, oh, the big giant blowout on the plaza with, you know, dozens and dozens of chefs. And we're, we got the okay to do it. So we're excited about that. Yep. And we always have the Thanksgiving Day Parade down at Macy's. So <sighs> we're excited for that. With lots of good stuff coming up. I feel like we're turning the corner, guys. I hope. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. I think Knock so. Knock on wood. Uh, have a good week, everybody. Welcome to Football Fright in America. I'm Mike Tirico with live coverage of a special Super Bowl size celebration taking place right now over in Stadium 1A. Football fans from coast to coast have come together to honor one of America's favorite pastimes. While the crowd is cheering for their own home teams, they're united in their love of the game. Let's check in with some fans. Yes! Yes! Oh, yeah! It's football, baby. It's football. I love football so much. What's not to love? <laughs> Beer, fans, fun. I think the thing that brings us all together is rooting against uh, a common enemy. You know, every city, there's a rivalry. I think people's favorite teams say a lot about them, so it's almost an extension of yourself. Who that say they're going to beat them Saints? Who that? Who that? Go Ravens! <laughs> My dad took me to see the Washington team play Buffalo. There's a guy named Doug Williams who's under center for Washington. That was it. I was so. My dad always watched football, and I remember watching with him. He rooted for the Cowboys. Don't tell my husband, because now we're Eagles! E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles! Ever since we were kids, my parents were always glued to football. It didn't matter who was playing, we were in. But then I discovered the New Orleans Saints, and I realized that there was magic. I don't really know the rules that well, but I know one rule is eat, eat too much. My favorite memory of Super Bowl Sunday is Mr. Roker's house because he has a huge spread. It doesn't matter who's playing. You pick a team and you scream for them. I love the food. I love all the, I love people getting a little nuts. I don't mind a nacho. It's all good. It's all the best of America, like all rolled into one. It gets no better than football. Yeah. The energy out there is electric. Cheers are echoing all across the stadium. So let's get this party started with the sound of Sunday Night Football on NBC. It's the song we wait all day for. Here's country superstar Carrie Underwood. to kick things off arriving to the stadium now the league's favorite dynamic duo Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski 
Brady, of course, the most decorated quarterback in history. 20 seasons with the Patriots, two with the Bucks, and seven Super Bowl wins. The Brady-Gronk bromance, as legendary as their teamwork on the field. Gronk even came out of retirement to join Brady in Tampa, bringing the Lombardi Trophy back to the Bay. Man, these two play hard and party harder. You may remember their Super Bowl celebration made a lot of waves. It's the man with smooth moves both on and off the field. Let's go! Rob Let's go! Let's go, baby! Let's go! Hey, oh, oh. Let's go! Bro, bring out and the goat! Where's the goat? Living legend. Let's go! The goat himself, Tom Brady. Let's go! Let's go! Hey, Giselle. <laughs> oh, hey! TB, throw me one of those. No, not that one, man. You remember what happened the last time? <laughs> Yeah, 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 that one, that one. Come on, let's go. Oh, there you go. Hey. Yeah! Let's go. Let's go. Bronx smash. Yeah, baby. Yeah, that baby. victory was a tough loss for Kansas City. And their star quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. But do not count the Chiefs out of the big game this season. Mahomes is already living up to his reputation as a gunslinger with an incredible arm. In his three years as a starter, he's played in two Super Bowls and won one. I love you, Patrick Mahomes! His meteoric rise is inspiring legions of young fans across the country. Entering the stadium now, the pride of Kansas City, Patrick Mahomes! Mahomes, Mahomes, yeah. you have so many young fans out there, like the boy we just saw. What do you want to say to them? All I can say, Brett, is we're going to work hard. That's all you can do. And that's my message to all the kids out there, especially that adorable little boy that we just saw there. You work hard. You can do anything. You can even, you can even make it to the Super Bowl. And to my number one fan out there, this one's for you, kid. Classy guy, that Mahomes. The one show you don't want to miss, the Super Bowl halftime, the most spectacular live performance of the year. Legends like Beyonce, Prince, and Gaga have brought down the house. The 2020 honors went to The Weeknd, who lit up the stadium with blinding lights. That's what makes the Super Bowl must-see TV. All eyes are on halftime performances for the spectacle, the stunts, the star power. You remember when Bruno Mars headlined? 115 million people tuned in to watch him get down on the gridiron in a halftime show that was a runaway success. the moves and now one of the most iconic cheer teams not just in football but in all of sports now taking the field please welcome the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders whether or not you're a Cowboys fan get ready to root for the white and blue
the Super Bowl is more than just a game, as you know. It's an event. You come for the football, and you stay for the commercials. They make us laugh, they make us cry. And the best ones stick with us long after the game ends. Hey Al, just watching the game with Hoda. Me too, I'm at a bar, having a beer. What's up? What's up? Hey, why don't you guys come down to Riley? See you soon. Hey, barkeep, another round. What's up? What's up? Another bud. We take this kill three. What's that? What's that? Enjoy, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Craig. What's up? What's the game? Cheers. What's up? Yes. Thank you, NFL. These are the real Thank championship you. rings. What? I've got seven of them. I got Gronk four. That's right. That's I'll be crazy. sending two back. <laughs> Gronk, no smash rings. I mean, that is incredible. And can yeah. we talk about the cheerleaders? You guys, oh my I'm gosh. sorry, but wow. that How's was not legit. How long did you guys rehearse? Well, we went all the way to Dallas, met these wonderful women oh. who taught us and were so patient and, and kind. Can we so just say you. they were patient and that is their real touchdown cheer. That's yes, it is. Impressive. Yes. Yes. Bruno Mars Bruno. and your back. Bruno, no, oh. Chanel, Chanel. I'm game sorry. ball, game ball, yeah, Bruno game Mars. Ball. Game ball. Game ball. Game ball. As so usual. Fun. One of our backup dancers was my first interview on Weekend Today. Oh He's a, he was like, what, 11 at the time? Wow. And, and is, so then we turned around, we were like, wait a minute. Wait, so do you just practice for five minutes? Is that what it goes? Uh, or do you you know what I do really? in my sleep? Like I kind of, so what are you yeah. saying while you're dancing? Like I saw you, were you counting? I was or like singing? saying the words. Oh, singing. Wow. Oh, okay. She's out of her body. She's, She's so good. good. And Carrie, you are amazing. Amazing. Yes. Yes. Well, I gotta be honest, I wanna thank Savannah for these boots because my other ones were too small and I'm constantly pulling You know what, down. no, you got my like Carrie's. But anyway, the real Carrie Underwood, uh, she, I did send her a picture of, of us and she said that we all look good. So oh, we look good. 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 We know how much you love football. Yeah. And we know how much you love the Saints. Yeah. And we know how much you love one <laughs> player in particular and he had a little message for you. What's up, Hoda? Drew Brees here. Ah! Fantastic rendition of the Carrie Underwood yes! Sunday Night Football yes. song. Fantastic. Loved it. We love you. Thank you so much for supporting us and the Saints. Do that, baby. Uh, I love you. Cherry on top. Oh, Cherry crazy. on top. Guys, All right, oh my Mr. Gosh. Weekend. Wait, we didn't get to you. Did Come on. Can we Look talk about the guy. weekend? Right. Can I touch your hair? Sure, go right ahead. I had that exact same haircut back in the 70s. Actually, <laughs> even in the 70s, I was bald. <laughs> Sad, really. All right, guys, we are just getting started. We're going to have more of our football freight in America celebration right here in Stadium 1A coming up. But first, your local news. Yeah. <laughs> can sometimes feel like a Hail Mary <laughs> in the fourth quarter with just seconds left in the Super Bowl. It's true, and just like in the NFL, it takes a lot of practice. We actually started fittings and rehearsals weeks before this yep. big moment. So here is a sneak peek at this year's very special lineup. Go, Cowboys, go! What? How is that? What? What? How can your mouth move like that? <laughs> 
behind the scenes fun fact, we have to have stock footage of a pretend football game, and we're just mesmerized by the three plays that are running in an endless loop over and over. Only problem is we blocked Chanel's face. Thank you. <laughs>there's a there's somebody here in a costume georgia from virginia yeah. she's going through chemo mm. she she had to lo she's lost her hair she shaved so she leaned in as uncle fester Woo! from the adams family yeah. so god bless you we love you love you georgia this happen. Let's start telling our, our just the people who the wonderful oh. ones are. Philip Heckman, our oh, awesome Phil. designer. Phil. The entire wardrobe, hair, and makeup. Woo! Alex and Lyle, everybody. Yes, Ed Helbig and our design team, editor Scott Goldberg, Jennifer Patty, and the dancers from Jay Woo! New Jersey. Yep. Of course, the NFL. I want to thank them again. Can't thank them enough. Our buddy Mike Tirico, oh, Mike. Victor yes. Cruz, and the Dallas Cowboys. Yes! Smith, who's cooking meatballs, yes. appreciate you. I love it. Uh, and a big thanks to the Plaza crowd. Yes. Yes. Happy Halloween. Yes. Oh, God, the Halloween yes. best. Oh. And our background dancers. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You guys. Yourself. Here's the thing. We're just getting started. We're going to keep the Halloween fun going in Woo. our third and fourth hours. All right. All right. Have, Have a good first. one. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Yeah, maybe it's
my microphone stuff. Here, lean in here. I got my All right, thank you, TB. You're the best. That's why you're the ghost. We've got an awesome crowd here this morning filled with dynamic costumes. So we brought in some special help. We got our Victor Cruz is in the house helping us pick some of our favorites. Yeah. So please, as Carson just melted, mentioned, welcome to the field, former New York Giant Super Bowl Victor. champion, Victor, Victor Cruz! <laughs> Oh, a lot of memories. First of all, the cold. It's starting to get football weather out here a little bit. Um, but definitely the memories, seeing you guys in these beautiful outfits and these uniforms Wait, is bringing me back. Is that your Super Bowl ring you're wearing? It is my ring. Oh. It is my ring. Yes. Oh. Check me out. Yeah. Check me out. Yeah. We clear which one we on. That's the one right there. Yeah. Right. So you traded in stadium for, for the studio. You're the host of uh, E! News Daily Pop. And this morning you've been hanging out with our crowd looking at some of these the, your favorite costumes. Yeah, I've been looking at some of my favorite costumes. And I want to go down the list of okay. our top three. Okay. Can I do that? Yeah, please. Uh, first and foremost, we got Jordan and Kelly here. We got... Uh, um, they're from Marion, Indianapolis. They matching our theme of football. They got yes. the hot dog, ketchup, and mustard. Obviously, they have the hot dog. What's the hot dog, right? Oh. His name is Indy. Yes. Indy. Her name is Indy. Yes. And um, talking about your costume, where did it come about? This whole thing. Uh, well, she was the inspiration, okay. obviously. <laughs> so we just built everything from her. It was kind of last minute, but I'd say it looks really great. It works. Turned Incredible. out really nice. well. Incredible. Amazing. Now, second, we have Felicia here. Yeah. Felicia. Felicia. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She's not playing. Now, Felicia. Me, Felicia. Now. You're not a playboy, bunny. <laughs> so, Felicia. Felicia's from Richmond, Virginia. She handmade this entire outfit. Wow, Felicia. She's great. She crushes it. She's, um, you know, keeping her warm in this time. That's amazing. It's incredible. Cute. And Good then, job. last but not least, we have Jen. 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 Brooklyn. Make some noise for Jen. I almost broke into her castle because I thought there was a, a sleeping beauty in there. <laughs> it's just her and a dragon. The, the detail on this is incredible. Is. I love the fire sticks in front of the, uh, yes. the castle there. So these are our three finalists for top costume. Yeah! yeah. Awesome! Okay, top costume for me is, um, now I didn't mention this before, Felicia is a retired firefighter, oh. retired as a captain. All right. Make some noise for her. My dad was a fireman of 30 plus years, wow. also retired. So the winner of Top Costume is Felicia. Oh. Yay! Yeah. 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 Can we see you? Yes. Hi. Hi. There we go. Hi, Felicia. Felicia. Oh. We got something very, very special. Listen, for where you are you know. from? Felicia, no, that's that's your, but first, let's thank our runner ups to give them some gifts here. Yes. Oh, okay. with some great gear. This is for the runner ups. Wow. Swag bag. Oh. Nice. Which, yes. But there's there's a big, there's a pretty big gift, right? Yeah. Yeah, but the Carson, winner. What is the winner. Yeah. Is going to the Super Bowl. Oh my gosh, take a look. The folks at JetBlue are giving you two round trip tickets to the big game. Plus, Hilton is providing a two night stay at the Hilton Anaheim to complete the whole package, Felicia. Yeah, when you are selling that costume. There you go. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Absolutely. And hand sewing that costume, my goodness. But we also, we also have some more for the folks who were runners up as well. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah, they're 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 right there. Oh, okay. Right. Right. <laughs> He's thinking about the big game Sunday. Yeah, all right, so all right. Everybody who came to the plaza, yes. everyone who came to the plaza, decked out, we want to thank you. Yes. Victor, of course, a big thank you. Thank, thank you, Victor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
there. You're starting your week with our favorite streaming channel today all day. I'm Joe Fryer in for Carson today and welcome to Pop Start Plus where we cover the big news and discussions from the entertainment world. Coming up, Andrew Garfield has a buzzy new movie musical out and he'll tell you all about it. Plus, we're celebrating a milestone anniversary for an iconic sports movie, Hoosiers. But we'll start with your Pop Start headlines. First up, Adele, one of the world's best-selling artists, has been on a six-year hiatus, but now the 33-year-old is releasing new music and revealing new details to Oprah about her time out of the spotlight. The pre-taped concert special was interspersed with the singer's first television interview promoting her fourth album, 30. Winfrey asking Adele about her song lyrics, sadness, and self-care. Hello, it's me. In a much-anticipated concert and interview, Adele opening up to Oprah Winfrey about heartbreak, healing, and hope. So, do you call this, is this the divorce album? I think I'm divorcing myself on it. The Grammy winner revealing the moment she realized that she wanted to divorce her husband. When I admitted to my own friends who thought I was really happy, but actually I'm really unhappy and they all gasp. Sometimes it lasts in love, but sometimes it hurts instead. The singer saying she's now focused on her son and taking care of herself. I stopped drinking, that's one great way of, um, of really sort of getting to know yourself is being, you know, just drinking water and being sober as anything. Revealing that her father struggled with alcohol and that she worked to mend their relationship. The two listening to her music together for the first time before he died of cancer back in May. As I got older, I definitely understood that it was the alcohol. It wasn't a choice that he was necessarily making in himself that he didn't want to. But when you're little, me. You when don't you're know little, that. you don't know. Focusing on self care, leading Adele to a much talked about 100 pound weight loss. I'm not shocked or even phased by it because my body has been objectified my entire career and when you were heavier you were fine i was and i was body positive then and i'm body positive now but it's not my job to validate how people feel about their bodies Ooh. but adele knows her true fans will always be there for her the crowd in a stunning show at the Griffith Observatory and speaking directly to her nine-year-old son, Angelo. This is the first time that my son has ever seen me perform. It's the absolute honor of my life, baby, to have you here tonight. Listen, I'm wow. here, for, yeah. here for Adele. And I should mention, guys, there was another special moment there at the Griffith Observatory, which was beautiful, by the way. Adele helped a fan plan a surprise marriage proposal to his girlfriend. He brought her to the observatory, blindfolded, unmasked her, then popped the question in front of the celebrity, the crowd, and the singer. Oh my God. Can you imagine? She's, she's like, That's a lot of trust. Yeah. First of all, you think you're going to an Adele concert. That alone oh, look is at really her. cool. Look at her face. It's a good thing she said yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. She said yes. There you go. Wow. All right. And quickly, Downton Abbey, the Crawleys and their staff are headed back to the big screen. And we have an exclusive sneak peek at the first full trailer for the highly anticipated sequel, revealing Lady Grantham, played by Maggie Smith, might have a few more tricks up her sleeve. Years ago. Before you were born, I met a man, and now I've come into the possession of a villa in the south of France. What? They better be warned. The British are coming. No. <laughs> <laughs> Costumes, the drama, Downton Abbey, a new era, hits theaters March 18th, 2022. Lady Grantham have a boyfriend? Sounds Is that like what it. we're taking away from this? She was dying at the end of no, the no, no, I, guess, no. I guess she bounced back. Love saves, Al. <laughs> yeah. uh, to see the full trailer. That's a villa. Head over to today.com. Oh, That's today's Pop Start News. After the break, our sit-down with Andrew Garfield. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, yes, shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. 
Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. In the new movie musical, Tick, Tick, Boom, Andrew Garfield plays the late composer and playwright Jonathan Larson. He was the creator of the legendary musical Rent, gaining him both a Tony and a Pulitzer. And Garfield says portraying Larson meant a lot to him. Here's our conversation. We are back with Tony winner and Oscar nominated star Andrew Garfield. He is using his many, <laughs> many talents, some newly discovered in the new film called Tick, Tick, Boom. It's, he's, he's starring as the creator of the musical Rent, Jonathan Larson, and it's based on the autobiographical musical of the same name. It follows John's life as a young theater composer in the 90s, struggling to finish his boundary breaking musical. Andrew, good morning, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. You know what I love about you? Yes. Like, so, okay, so here's the thing. You say you don't know how to sing, you yeah. don't know how to play piano. Lin-Manuel Miranda says, hey, I think you might be the right guy for my, my movie. And you say, how long is it gonna be till we start filming? Because you're planning to learn those things. Well, yeah, like any good actor, I, I lie on my CV. <laughs> and he says, you know, I want you to do this. And I say, well, how long, yeah, how long do you need? And, and he says, well, a year. And I'm like, yeah, I can probably do, do that kind of stuff. And yeah, sure, yeah, I can ride a horse, I can sing, I can play piano, I can yeah, do all so this So you stuff. learned it all? You learned how to play piano and sing in that year's time? I did, <laughs> and what a privilege that is. And, and, and like, you know, how lucky I am that I got to do it through this amazing man's music, Jonathan Larson's mm -hmm. music, and so, so much undiscovered music as well. And there, there are songs in this musical that people are gonna be surprised by, even people who are big fans oh. of Jonathan Larson, so yes. Yeah, so. Of, of all people to say that to, Lynn manuel yeah. Miranda, I mean, Broadway <laughs> legend, and you're like kind of riffing, sure, I can sing. Yeah. There was a moment I read that he came and watched one of your rehearsals. Mm -hmm. He snuck singing. in. Because he, was mm -hmm. he thinking like, all right, mm. I got to make sure he actually can oh, sing. I yeah. might have to yeah. recast this role. Oh, of course, because he didn't he didn't want to be haunted by the ghost of, of Jonathan Larson for the rest <laughs> of his life. Going, Why did you let this person play me? Um, so, yeah, I was rehearsing with um, his one of his music, um, his music people, Kurt Crowley, who's an amazing um, person. And I was doing the first couple of phrases of the first number, 3090. And it was just me and Kurt alone in a room, or so I thought. But Lynn had kind of snuck, snuck in. in. Oh. And uh, the first I knew of that was that uh, his shoe flew across my face. <laughs> and then he was looking at me so happy and excited, and he shouted at me. He was like, Andrew Garfield, you can sing, and I do oh. not have to recast you. <laughs> Is that what he said? Yeah. He was more relieved than you. Oh, totally, uh, yeah. Wow. So then we were kind of off to the races. I knew when the shoe flew, we were in a, in a good place. <laughs> Is that like a thing, to throw that, a shoe? Is that like a good sign? It's a weird Lin-Manuel Miranda. I don't think it's a theater thing. I don't think oh. it's a musical theater. I think it's just a Lin-Manuel Lin Miranda thing. thing. Like, when, when he's upset, in a good way and angry at you for yes. being good. good. Yes, he'll yes. take his shoe off, he'll put ah. it somewhere, or he'll throw it, or yeah, it's well, a it I was, like it. it. It's a spectacular performance, Thank and you. I thought what made it even more touching was you just, you dedicated this performance of you ha as you had others to your mom who passed away not too long ago. Yeah, and yeah. you just were telling me and Savannah, you love to talk about her. Yeah, I, if I, I only want to talk about her now because, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think grief is all the unexpected, unexpressed love. I mm. think that's what it feels. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Look yeah. at that gorgeous. She loved that green jumpsuit. That yeah. was like, she felt really powerful in that green jumpsuit. It was the kind of thing she wouldn't usually wear. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so for me, it's it, grief is unexpressed love. So, and I'm never going to be able to ex express fully the love that I have for my, for my mother, the gratitude I have. That, that I got given the best mother around. So uh, it's, it's, an, it's a never, and, and for John, you know, for me, it's like we all leave this life with an unfinished song, no matter 
no matter how much of our song we get out. It's never going to be fully done. And, and it was the same for my mother. So I get, to, I get to continue singing her song for her in my life. And, um, and, and I get to do it through, through John's unfinished song as well uh, for all of us. So I, I just, it's, I'm, I feel very, very lucky. Well, other than <laughs> Lin-Manuel Miranda, she was the, really the first yeah. one to discover you and yeah. your talent. And <laughs> seeing that maybe drama and acting, yeah. maybe that was going to be your calling. Yeah, she that's saw right. that in she you. She did, even though she was destined, making me maybe destined for a life of poverty <laughs> <laughs> as, a, as an out-of-work actor. She, she, she was like, I'd rather my son be happy than... Um, than, than rich or than, um, you know, within the status quo, you know. I, yeah, I was, I, was, I was an athlete and then I gave that up and then I was studying academia and I kind of didn't connect with the mm -hmm. things that were being presented to me in this kind of provincial place that I was brought up in the south of England. And it was her that really saw that I was struggling and said, well, why don't you look at something creative? And mm -hmm. I was like, well, I tried clay molding and I wasn't very good and I tried <laughs> painting and I wasn't very good. I tried music and I was fine. And yeah. then it was the last thing I tried was theater. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and she, she kind of hung in there with me um, and, and was the first person to put me on that kind of path. So I'm indebted to her forever. Wow. Well, you know they're talking Oscar buzz for your performance. Yes, I don't they know if are. that embarrasses you or pleases you to hear. Yeah. Both. Would you rather <laughs> would you rather me take a shoe and throw it at you? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. I would much rather be knocked out by okay. your high heel right Wait, now. Wait, we do have to ask you about Spider Man. Oh yeah, everybody's you know saying we have to. everybody's saying there you may be in it. There's a cameo. Why don't you just go ahead and confirm? Go ahead. <laughs> if, I, if I just make it easy, I let's, love, just, uh, let's just end it right now. Why are, speculate? You guys are really good at your jobs, but I'm better at mine. <laughs> I, um, no, I listen. I, I I'm not in the film. I I love Spider Man. I always have. I was so happy to 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 have played the part. And, and I'm so excited to see what they do with the third one, just like uh -huh. you guys are, to be uh, honest. Okay. No, that's not like a diplomatic answer. Yeah. Like, I really, really mean it. Like, I love Tom Holland. Yeah. I love John Watts. I love Emmy Pascal and Kevin Feige and what they've done with those movies and that character, because it's, you know, it's an important character to me. So I'm just really excited to see what happens in the third one, as you guys are, I can Andrew, see as well. Andrew, well done, Andrew. Delight. Thank you Thanks, so Andrews. much, and congratulations yeah. on all your success. Thank you. Tick, Tick, Boom is in theaters now and on Netflix this Friday. Up next, to look back at one of Julia Stiles' most beloved movies with the actress herself. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. The coronavirus come back next year. So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it just is. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. Oh, More good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news for hours since the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just fits. So for breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. 20 years ago, Julia Stiles starred as Sarah Johnson in Save the Last Dance. And for our flashback series, she shared what she remembers about filming after all these years and dance moves later. Yeah, I remember the montage with him teaching Sarah to dance in the studio and they're like bobbing, he's teaching her about rhythm and they're bobbing their heads. 
And I'm going to pat myself on the back that it was hard for me to pretend to not have rhythm. I can say that because I'm terrible at ballet. The only thing that I brought to the table was that I could do the hip hop stuff. Uh, so yeah, but it became like comedic almost. Hi, I'm Julia Stiles and I'm flashing back to Say the Last Dance. How would I describe the character Sarah in Say the Last Dance? She has ex experienced a trauma. Her mother dies in the beginning of the movie and she hasn't quite, she, she's like unsettled um, with the move to her father's house. And I think starts off very un unsure of herself, very um, insecure in many ways. Um, but over the course of the movie learns with the help of um, Sean Patrick Thomas's character, she, she finds her sense of self-worth and confidence. And um, yeah, she's a, she's, in a she's a fish out of water in her new school. She learns to adapt to her new environment. I guess. Oh, he's amazing. He's such a lovely human being, such a gentleman. And we really relied on each other in the making of that film because, you know, when you're the, when you're unknown pretty much and you become the lead in a studio movie that where they're spending a lot of money, the pressure is on, even if it's not spoken, you know, that it's there. And the two of us together, I think we're really a nice team. And he, he's, I think as I remember correctly, I know he's older than I am, um, but it was more, I guess, noticeable back then when I was 19 and I think he was 30. Um, I could rely on him because he had a groundedness and a maturity and a life experience that was really nice. I, mean, I, I think I did, I did a screen test. I met Thomas Carter, the director, and he told me that he had seen 10 Things I Hate About You and the dance that I, that Kat does on the pool table when she's drunk to Biggie Smalls. He saw that and he was like, oh, you have rhythm. So then I screen tested um, with Sean and then another actor who was up for the role. And then they hired me. The absolute best thing about making that movie was the dance. I mean, the rehearsals and the dance training, that was like, I was like, sign me up, where do I start? Um, it was really challenging and really daunting because I'm not a professional dancer. Um, so there was a lot of playing catch up, but it was so fun and such an awesome opportunity to get to do that kind of like rigorous training and um, choreography rehearsals. We did over a month, I think, or maybe it was two months uh, before we started filming of, uh, largely for me, the ballet, because I had to bust my butt to get in shape and also to, you know, catch up to the level that Sarah, or at least look like I could catch up, to, I could be at the level that Sarah was supposed to be at. Um, and I did ballet uh, as a kid and a teenager, but I had stopped. Um, so this was, this, that was the, the most rigorous part of the training. So we did, we did two months before we started filming, and then on the weekends we would do the choreography rehearsals. Um, Fatima, who was the hip hop choreographer, when she would, we would rehearse the uh, audition scene, and she was always, always refining the moves. So it was hard to keep up. <laughs> but the beauty and sort of the heartbreak of the relationship is that Sarah doesn't really see what the big deal is which is naive and also like now we would call it white privilege but she, she really likes him and doesn't see why the outside world has an issue with it and but inevitably because other people do it's going to affect the relationship i think um even aside from the race issues i think the sort of classic romance of their relationship is is beautiful because it's like he believes in her and he lifts her up he teaches her how to be a better dancer and, and a better, you know, his, he imparts a lot of very mature, grown up uh, ideas to her and, and cares for her, which I think is really, really beautiful. The things that they say in the movie, particularly Chenille, Carrie Washington's character, they, when they talk about their experience 
and why they might be uncomfortable with the idea of a black guy and a white girl and also what it's like to be an African-American woman, um, I think is, I, I mean, it, op it, it, it opened my eyes to something that I hadn't really thought about before. And I think it's really cool that it's like snuck into a pop teen dance movie. You and Derek act like it don't bother people to see you two together. Like you don't hurt people to see. Kerry Washington was and is amazing. Absolutely, there's no doubt in my mind why she has the career that she has. She's an incredible actress and I could see it then. Um, she was really kind, really generous, you know, um, and I just remember being really impressed by her skill set. Like she's just a really good actress and she was so ready for that breakout part. She was like, you know, she was really, really ready to step into uh, that role and in, in, in that kind of a platform, like a, a movie that a lot of people are gonna see. She was dying while I was dancing and, and I was mad at her and I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. I do remember that scene. I remember filming it. I remember we were on the Chicago River, so it was like an amazing landscape um, and location. I, in terms of like, crying and emotional scenes. I've learned so much now in the last 20 years about how to approach scenes like that, but I definitely would watch it and be really critical of myself. But it was, I mean, genuine and um, real, I guess. I am really grateful to be, have been a part of something that resonates with people, entertains people even this many years later. I mean, that's what you hope for as an actor um, and a storyteller. It's usually, it's not what they're, what people say, it's sort of their excitement and enthusiasm about it, like, that that to me is the most flattering. I wasn't even thinking about, like, this anniversary coming up and then was told, oh, it's the 20th anniversary of Save the Last Dance. And just now before this interview, I, was, I stopped, like, thinking about the whatever things on my to-do list that I, I was, like, reflecting, going, you know, what would the 19-year-old Julia think of Julia now? 20 years, that is my entire adult life so far, from 19 until, you know, now. So, um, lots, lots to be grateful for. I feel much, I feel like I've learned so much about acting, about the movie industry, about myself in those 20 years. I've had so many great experiences, like, I'm pretty grateful. 40 is looking all right. 40 is looking pretty good. Six, seven, eight, step back, baby. It's entertaining and it has the formula of dance movies, which I love, but it does have something deeper going on. Um, and it's a, it's a pop teen dance movie, but it, underneath it is like, we've snuck in some pretty major ideas. And it's a classic, like, not underdog, cause she's not really the underdog, but like fish out of water, being triumphant and, and rising to this challenge. Um, but then also the, the romance part of it is just really, you know, dance is very romantic and, and the way that, the things that Sarah learns in, in, in I don't know, it's just like, it's a love story, it's a dance movie. And, and, and it's got a happy ending, you know? I can't say this on the record yet, but welcome to Juilliard. <laughs> There's a part of me like many years ago that would have been too sort of cynical for that sort of thing. And now more than ever, I think, I just want to watch something that's going to make me feel good. <laughs> a big thanks to Julia Stiles for spending some time with us. Up next, a great moment from our vault to mark a milestone for the Hoops classic Hoosiers. Make the most of your day with Today All Day. Get closer to all your friends of today in a whole new way. Today in 30. We give you a mix of everything you love about our show in a mere 30 minutes. Oh, yes, yes. Shop today with Joe Martin. We're helping you shop like never before. The latest styles and biggest names. Today food. Things are heating up in the Today All Day Kitchen. Cooking essentials and recipe inspiration. Get ready. Are you ready? Oh, I'm so ready. Only on Today All Day. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's Let's go. Real fun.
We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! We're back for our series from the vault. We feature a moment from our today archive and today it's all about Hoosiers considered one of the greatest sports movies ever. It marked its 35th anniversary over the weekend starring Gene Hackman. It tells the story of a small town high school basketball team on a run to the Indiana State Championship and Hackman stopped by today as the movie was released back in 1986. What is the mythology of the Milan story? Well, Milan was a, this tiny, tiny town, and, and they had very few uh, uh, in the high school, and they, they went all, all the way to the state championship. And so this inspired this, uh, this film, Hoosiers. And if uh, truth be known, uh, all the people who came up to us, certainly, uh, and said that they were there at the championship game, if they were actually there, then that stadium held about a half a million people. Right, right. Well, like I say, I was nowhere nearby, it, right? and I remember yeah. it vividly. Um, this was a cast of complete unknowns, virtually, after yourself, Dennis Hopper, Barbara Hershey, and I think one other uh, young fellow who was a professional actor. Everybody else were unknowns. They were all kids uh, uh, from the Indiana area, from Indianapolis area, who uh, had auditioned first to see if they could play basketball, and then afterwards to uh, uh, see if they could act a bit. And they did it that way so that they wouldn't have their heart broken. You know, they get a good actor and find out he couldn't play basketball. So they did it that They were all good basketball players. Now, you're a professional actor. I can just hear you saying, oh, wonderful. I'm starring with a whole bunch of uh, basketball players who've never even acted in a school play. Well, it, it, yeah, that was one's first thought. But uh, as it turned out, uh, we had some little acting classes. And they were terrific. They they just they caught on so quickly. You were the coach. You were I, the acting I, coach. I was yeah. I was the acting coach also to some degree. And um, we didn't do anything terribly serious. Just little kind of uh, uh, improvisations and uh, kind of real simple things. But they were really they really caught on. It was amazing. Well, did you find any maybe potential stars? Did A couple of boys I think want to be actors now. Uh, they they got the uh, the bug, you know. They, they, it seemed kind of interesting. They, there was a lot of crowds and uh, a lot of girls and that kind of thing. And so I, I think maybe a couple of them might be actors. <laughs> As we indicated before, it was kind of a long shot for you. Yeah, it was because it's not uh, an obvious uh, commercial film, uh, although I, I think it's going to turn out to be. But uh, I had never worked in the Midwest as an actor. I'd worked, um, you know, in small television stations around the Midwest as a floor manager and that kind of thing. But um, it was a real challenge for me, and it was it was worth it certainly. Um, I, I was telling you before, the, the, a lady, an old lady, came up to me in the street one of the first days we were shooting, and, and called me Gene Allen, and um, that was a, a name that I was known around my neighborhood because my dad's name was Gene, and my cousin. You grew up across not far away in, in that's Dandel, right, just sixty miles, right? sixty miles from Indianapolis, and uh, she said, I, I have pictures of your mother in my purse. And they were, she had pictures of a birthday party. My mother was 12 years old and uh, another one, of, my mother when she was 18, I'd never seen those pictures. And it was just, it was so touching. It was worth everything just to, for that moment. The, the title, Hoosiers, um, is indefinable. I mean, there is no good, legitimate no, there, definition a lot of, of the word jokes. Hoosiers. But for someone who, who, coming from across the border in, in Illinois, did, did the Illini have a definition for Hoosiers that you can <laughs> say on television? We called them a lot of things that I couldn't say on the air. Yeah. Um, but I was a kind of a half a Hoosier because I had gone to high school in East Chicago, Indiana, uh, briefly. So I felt that I was, uh, I was there legitimately. Yeah, in East Chicago, did you know the Milan story when you? Were no, there? I didn't. No, yeah. I was gone from there. By well, now. you were only half a Hoosier. <laughs> That's, That's right. Why. Who doesn't love a good underdog story? That does it for today's Pop Start Plus. Come back and see us tomorrow because Savannah has a fun chat with Lady A for her six-minute marathon series. Thanks for watching.
Hello, happy Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. You are watching today all day. Did you mean to do that? Yeah, I mean, come on. We're kicking off another big week. It's going to be good. Uh, the holidays are just around the corner, and it's coming amid a surging concern in COVID cases. So how might that impact your family's plans? We're going to let you know what some top health officials are saying. Then it was sunny skies here in Studio 1A this morning because Elmo stopped by with his newest friend on Sesame Street. They told us all about a special celebration they're getting ready to hold, and you definitely don't want to miss that one. Can't wait. And we are are closing the show with one of my favorite people, country cutie hey. Blake Shelton. He's got some exciting news to share with us on his latest project. Plus, we had an update on his life as a newlywed, so buckle up, because it's time for Today, Today in 30. 30. We begin with the holidays fast approaching, as mentioned, and new concerns over a winter COVID surge. What this could mean for in-person get-togethers after so many people had to stay home last year. NBC Sam Brock's in Miami with the details on this. Sam, good morning. Hi, Savannah Hoda, good morning. Doctors say one thing is certain, the fifth wave this winter will not be worse than last year because we have the vaccine. But data right now showing something else becoming increasingly clear. Returning to sites like these to get your booster shot, likely your best bet to stay safe this holiday season. Americans are flying right into the holidays, hoping to share hugs, not illness, with COVID cases once again ticking up. <laughs> We're going to see a post-holiday spike. There's no question about that. COVID infections now up double digits in 20 states, with hot spots ranging from the Northeast to the Great Lakes to the Southwest, making it hard to pin the latest jump on any one factor. Though there's a guaranteed path to put yourself in harm's way. How worried would you be if you're unvaccinated heading into the holidays? There is no doubt that if you are unvaccinated heading into the holidays with the patterns we see, you really do have a target on your back. Dr. Kavita Patel says unvaccinated younger Americans are still the primary driver of COVID nationwide, but a dip in vaccine effectiveness after six months is playing a role too. This morning, strong new language on boosters from top health officials. It isn't as if a booster is a bonus, but a booster might actually be an essential part of the primary regimen that people should have. The FDA has only authorized boosters for certain populations, although three states, California, Colorado, and now New Mexico, have approved them for everyone 18 and up. Every state is going to be seeing this waning immunity. Every state's gonna have to deal with it. Helping to stamp out community spread, the crush of young kids newly eligible for a shot. More than 1.1 million children under 12 have already received at least one dose. Aaron coming back from COVID, missing practice in person. Meanwhile, superstar quarterback Aaron Rodgers returning to the field Sunday after misleading the public about his vaccination status and testing positive for COVID. Everyone has their own right to get the vaccine or not, but as public figures, I think he shouldn't have lied. And back to the booster conversation. Pfizer has applied to the FDA again for authorization for everybody 18 and up. The difference, guys, this time is they're armed with a study of some 10,000 people with participants of all ages showing they're getting back to that efficacy levels of about 95 percent in a matter of days, not weeks. Savannah, back to you. All right, we'll see what the FDA does, Sam. Thank you. Stick around because there is much more coming up on Today in 30. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. More good people than bad people, you know, right? There is some late breaking news. Four hours into the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just made it. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. This is fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app.
Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. We are back with a woman who has carved quite the unique path to the top of the NBA. Yeah, mm -hmm. Cynthia Marshall, or Cynt, as she's better known, made headlines when she became the first black female CEO in the NBA. She was brought in to turn around a toxic environment discovered within the Dallas Mavericks organization. But Cynt uh, was blazing trails long before she stepped into that role. I first got to meet her a couple of months back, and she left such a strong impression on me. So when she was in New York recently, we sat down for an amazing conversation about her life and how she overcame the odds to get where she is today. Throughout her life, Sint Marshall has proven that she is fearless. This optimism, I know who's on your side. Yes. God's on your side. Yes. Her resume, a history of barriers she's broken. The first black senior class president at her high school. The first black cheerleader at UC Berkeley. The first black member of Delta Gamma at the university. And then the first black female CEO in the NBA at the age of 58. Did you set out to be the first or did you just do what you did? No, I just do what I did. You don't know you're the first. But the road to success was not easy. Sint grew up in the projects in California. At just 11 years old, she witnessed her father shoot a man, violence that was later aimed at her and her mother. I was scared. Domestic violence uh, was part of, our, uh, part of our family. Where did you put that part of your life when you were a little girl? Uh, you know, we hit it. I mean, people didn't know that my mom was you know, a victim of domestic violence. They didn't know my dad was doing the things he was doing. What was the worst your dad ever hurt you? He broke my nose when I was 15 years old. Did he think that you could ever become somebody? No, and that was the painful part. He told my youngest sister and I that summer that we would be hookers on the street without him. Sint was determined to prove him wrong, going to college, then working her way up at AT&T, where at one point she turned down a big promotion after her boss asked her to change her appearance, behavior, even her name. I said, you know, when I first started, y'all made me take out, get rid of my red shoes and take down my braids. Like, wh when does this stop? At some point, like, I have to be able to be me. And now you want to change my name? I've been sent my whole life. Since still got that promotion with higher management and Kerr to who she was, and she did, experiencing a powerful moment when she joined the company on Wall Street years later to help ring the opening bell. I just started crying, <laughs> and our CFO, John Stevens, is standing there, and he goes, Sint, what's wrong? And I said, you know, my daddy told us that we were going to be hookers on the street. And I told my mom, I'm going to make money, my money on Wall Street. I said, oh, my get this. I'm on Wall Street. This is crazy. Amid her career success, Sint and her husband, Kenny, struggled to start a family. Four second trimester miscarriages mm. in 10 years of trying to have kids. Mm. Four. Did you think maybe we're not meant to have children? No, I didn't think that. My yeah. husband thought that. Their fifth attempt brought them their daughter, Carolyn, or a special K, as they called her. She was born prematurely and passed away six months later. Do you remember holding her? Oh, yes. I remember, remember all her? that. And they said, uh, just hold her real tight because she'll probably be gone in about two days. Sint and Kenny later created their family of six through adoption. But in 2010, her strength was tested once again when Sint was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. I thought I had months to live. It was bad. Sint, now cancer free, retired from AT&T in 2017. But that retirement did not last long. In 2018, she got a call from Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban. A bombshell Sports Illustrated article just revealed sexual harassment and other improper workplace misconduct within the organization. I said, I don't know if I'm gonna do this. And two women stopped me and said, are you the person who Mark Cuban said is gonna come in and help us and save us? And they talked to me and they told me their stories. What were you learning? They said, we, we need help. You, you have yeah. to come in. The stuff in the article is true. So I went home and I prayed about it. I came back the next day. How did you go about it? I laid out a vision uh, from day one that said we would set the global standard in the NBA for diversity and inclusion. And then I laid out a set of values that spelled crafts. 
character, respect, authenticity, mm -hmm. fairness, teamwork, and safety, mm -hmm. both physical and emotional safety, and said these will not just be on the walls, but they would operate in the halls. Two years later, the Mavericks won the 2020 NBA Inclusion Leadership Award. Sint has also navigated the Mavericks through the pandemic and the social justice movement, helping to create conversations within their community on how to address systemic racism. If we want to make sure that equity is really something that we're all practicing every day, mm -hmm. we need to be out there right. to make it happen. Some things are bigger than basketball. We love basketball too, though. Of course. But some things are bigger than basketball. Yeah. A set of values she established long before stepping onto the court. Is there a quote that you hold on to? Yes, and especially when it comes to work. Uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's always a sunny day here in Studio 1A when our friends from Sesame Street stop by. And this morning, we are visiting with our old pal, Elmo, and his new buddy, G Young, making her television debut right yeah. here on Thank you. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait. Street. I had guys to see you, Ji Young, and you're get, they are all getting ready for a very special celebration that's taking mm -hmm. place on the block next week. Elmo, Ji Young, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's great to have you. So, so Ji Young, what's it like making new friends on Sesame Street? Oh, it's the best. I I'm kind of new on Sesame Street, but everybody's been really welcoming. Yeah. I heard you play music, Ji Young. Is that right? You're kind of a rock star? Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very simple. She's, um, be she's being humble. She's amazing. Oh, amazing. Are you guys oh. in a band together? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's called yeah. the Best Friend Band, and we rock out. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Oh, oh there they are. Yeah. Oh, you cool. guys are so good. Elmo, you're so good at making people feel included on Sesame Street. How are you doing that for Ji Young? Well, that's kind of what Sesame Street's all about. You know, we got we have people, monsters, birds, grouches. Oh, yeah. Uh, I understand that Sesame Street is getting ready to celebrate Neighbor Day. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit more about what Neighbor Day is? Yeah, well, Neighbor Day is going to be kind of like a great big, sort of like a block party. Oh. Yeah, big celebration where the whole community gets together. Yeah. Any special yeah. food or games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a, a, a bunch of special guests are going to join us for our for our party. Uh, uh, Simu Liu, yeah. uh, him and Big Bird are organizing a, a potato sack race. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you know Simu Liu? Yeah. Yeah, and Pat Malaxmi's going to be there. Oh. As, you know what? If you guys are available, uh -huh. if you want to yeah. come, Oh. You know people who can get you in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Everybody's yes. welcome. Oh, one question, monster. Elmo. Can you tell me how to get to Sesame Street? <laughs> yes. oh. You <laughs> take the R train. <laughs> 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 Young, what's your favorite part about making these new friends on Sesame Street? Oh, you know what's really cool about Sesame Street is that that no matter what you look like or how you play or where you come from, you belong, yeah. and that's yeah. really wow. cool. Mm, well, that's true. Yeah. Do you have a special? song for Neighbor Day? Oh, it's kind of a secret. Yeah. We've been working on a really cool new song and I've been working really, really hard on it with my guitar oh. and I can't wait to share it with everybody. I love that you play guitar, Ji Young. We can't wait to hear the song a little later, okay? Ji, yeah. we, we are so excited that you're a part of Sesame Street now. Yeah. We yeah, really are. it's it's pretty amazing. I, I feel very welcome. Mm. And it's the best neighborhood in the whole world. Oh, yes, do you it play is. any instruments? Are you just sing or what do you do in I the band? Use the keyboard. The keyboard. Oh. Oh. Elmo, do you know that Al does a great impression of you? <laughs> okay, okay, let's hear it, Mr. Oh, 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 no, no, I feel very nervous. I, I don't think I could do it now, Elmo. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> Where's that coming from? <laughs> Hey, Ji Young, you're always welcome here. Come yes. back and visit us. Okay? Thank you. I feel very welcome here. This was really fun. All yeah. right. Thank you, Ji. Oh. All right. If you want to join their Neighbor Day, catch See Us Coming Together, Sesame Street Special on HBO Max, PBS, and YouTube on Thanksgiving Day. What a fun mm. thing to do. And you'll get to meet Ji Young. We've got more about Sesame Street's newest neighbor on our website, today.com. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. 
Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go! International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. This isn't about spending going forward. This is about spending that's already happened. Do you accept the idea that we have a crisis at the border? The vaccine mandate. Is this going to work or is this going to backfire? If it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. This morning, we could not be more excited because we are catching up with the great Ernie Hudson. Ernie starred in the iconic Ghostbusters film as Winston Zeddemore, and now he's reprising his role in the new movie, Ghostbusters Afterlife. It follows a young girl named Phoebe who finds some strange equipment in her late grandfather's hideout. That's right. With the help of her teacher, played by Paul Rudd, and one of her classmates, they try testing some of that equipment out. Uh, we should probably get out of here. You're an adult. Yeah. And liable. You know what this means, right? Your grandfather was a Ghostbuster. Oh, uh, yeah. And so yeah, it yeah. begins. Yeah. Ernie Hudson, good to see you. Good well, see you. thank you. It's great to be here with you guys. I'm, yeah. uh, yeah, it's really a lot of fun. You know, I tell you, I, I saw the movie, Chanel saw it too. And besides being true to the original, it is a really emotional roller coaster, you know, besides all the other things that you come to expect. Was, was that really kind of important uh, you know, for, the, for the movie to go forward? Yeah, I think so. I think the fans have been so amazing. They've been there for almost 40 years and they've wow. been loyal to it. They've turned their cars into ectomobiles. <laughs> so I'm glad the movie delivers and I'm so proud of Jason uh, Reitman who directed it and, um, you know, wrote it and it's, yeah, it's a wonderful film. So Jason, who you said directed, wrote it, is the son of Ivan Reitman who directed the first the, one, Ivan produced the first that. Two, yeah. The first two, yeah. So was this a big uh, transition? What was that like for you to work with somebody you'd probably seen as a little boy? I remember Jason is six years old running around wow. the set on the first movie. And in the second movie, he does a, a, a small part in the very beginning of it. But to see him now all grown up and he's established his career, he's a wonderful director and to take over the helm here, it's just, it's, it's I'm, I'm just honored to be a part of it. Well, speaking of kids, they're not kids anymore, but we had, you know, they're not little kids. Finn Wolf, uh, Wolfhard and McKenna Grace, two of the actors in Ghostbusters, were here with us here on the third hour today. They are a delight, by the way. Yeah. And they were talking about how the proton packs were so heavy, or were not as heavy as what you guys had. Do you remember that? Yeah, because I think when they made the first proton packs, they actually made them out of metal, and they were really so heavy. they were really hard. They were really heavy, mentioned yeah. that to them, yeah. Yeah, yeah Billy would uh, complain a bit about it. <laughs> 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 I was afraid to complain. So, but uh, but uh, the new one now, you know, is new material. It's much lighter so funny. and a lot of fun. Yeah. I like mean, in my day, it was heavy. Yeah. What was it like working with Bill Murray again? And and did you know Ernie back then that this was going to be a franchise that has the staying power that it does? Did you know it was going to be a huge hit? 
Uh, yeah, I said, uh, 40 years from now, I'm going to be on the Today Show. <laughs> No, I, you, you never know. I, I knew it would be a hit, but I, I had no idea that 10 years, 15, 20 years later, yeah. uh, people would be, as he turning their Volkswagens into Ectomobiles, and that's amazing to me that they've been so loyal and, um, and love the movie the way they do. And work with Bill Murray again? Working with Bill is always fun. I, I love, I lo oh, actually, all the guys were so welcoming. They, I consider them all friends, and um, yeah, but I, but I love Billy. Awesome. Yeah, so this is such an iconic franchise, but you also do a lot of other stuff, right? So I, yeah. yeah, you're doing the third season of Family Business. Family Business on uh, BET. I've been very fortunate. I've been acting for over 55 years. Wow. Uh, my son is 56, That's and I was 56. acting before he was born. So, and I've been, I've been just had a, a wonderful career, and I'm so thankful. And uh, yeah, Family Business is out now, the third yeah. season. Yeah. And, and, you know, it, it, you were here back in 2015. Yeah. Uh, and, and we want to right a wrong. We had a, a basket of, <laughs> of swag for you. Well, your birthday is coming up, so we have another basket for okay. you. Uh, well, not quite a basket. To finish the basket, we <laughs> didn't have the Winston Zetamore. Oh, there we go. Yay. Action figure. Yes. So we wanted to make sure we completed the set for it. <laughs> well, I'm so thankful. A basket with everybody's picture on it, but him but, and but everything. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. So. Well, well, there was a T-shirt, a Ghostbuster T-shirt with four guys and Danny Aykroyd twice. And I'm like... Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, know. I know. We made a mistake. So it was our bad. It's all good. In 2021. There you have it. That's funny. <laughs> really? That's funny. It took us six Can years I... to make it right. But... I don't know how to respond, <laughs> so I just didn't say anything. I know, and we appreciated that. And the fact that you came back <laughs> yeah. speaks volumes about who you are. That's funny. So thank you. Uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife hitting theaters this Friday. I love it. It won't disappoint. You're going to love it. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All right, it's just me. Sometimes the news can be difficult and overwhelming for kids to understand. Will coronavirus come back next year? So to help make sense of it all, we've created a newscast just for them. Man, you know a lot. We hope your family will watch Nightly News Kids Edition. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, of course, this is Honey Bee by Blake Shelton, and you all are sending me remedies, which I really appreciate. So, so I brought yeah. a huge bowl of honey. Try that in a little. So I'm gonna try it, ready? Right now, okay. It's really thick, is this what's I supposed think to happen? I pour some of it off. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a, wait, <laughs> it's a lot. Wait, why don't we read the intro? Try okay, you it. go ahead, ready? Okay. Mmm. <laughs> Do you like it? <laughs> Wait, let me hear how you talk after it. Well, my own mouth. <laughs> oh, God, don't throw up. Don't. Is it good? <laughs> I'll go. Okay, there are so many things to love about Blake Shelton. His baby blue eyes, his southern accent. His music, don't you agree, Hoda? <laughs> yes, I do. But these days, Blake's all about good times and live music. He's the inspiration behind the entertainment franchise Old Red, and he had some big news to tell you about. Okay, I know you're jealous, right? I am. I know you're really jealous, and that honey works, but wow, it was a lot. We talked about you a little, but mainly we just talked about his life as a newlywed and his friendly feud with Ariana Grande. Take a look. Thank you. So so, Blake, I have to tell you, Hoda um, is sorry she couldn't be here. You know she has a life-size cutout of you in her office? No, I didn't. Well, she does. Um, so I just am going to send this to you. <laughs> I don't even have an office, but I'm going to build one just so I can hang my life-size Hoda in there. 
Blake Shelton is many things. A country artist with 28 number one hits, a longtime voice coach, and newlywed with wife Gwen Stefani. But he's also the inspiration behind the restaurant slash bar slash live music venue called Old Red. There are four locations across the country from Nashville to Oklahoma, and now Old Red is heading to Sin City. I've always thought it'd be cool to have like a bar and grill type thing with some music, you know. The centerpiece of the of the idea is uh, to showcase new artists coming up and, and in an environment that makes them look like a big star. When you think back to those days of, of playing in bars and that, does that, you miss those days or not really? My first single was a song called Austin. If this is Austin. And luckily it just, it caught it caught on in, in country music. I lived in Austin in 2001, so I remember that song. Okay, thank God. <laughs> one person remembers the song, but even with a with a number one hit, I was playing places that didn't even have a stage. So to compare it to that, I mean, it's it, there is no comparison. We can reach the stars. Blake's latest single, "We Can Reach the Stars," is his most sentimental one yet. You know, Gwen is. She's been pretty hard on me the last few years as far as she doesn't think I write enough music. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to take this opportunity to write a song for her as my vows. I'm just reading the lyrics and it feels like some sort of love poem. We always said we wish we'd met long before we finally did, but ever since that first kiss. I mean, it's so romantic. <laughs> well, I... are you blushing? Are you Actually, blushing? yesterday, I am blushing a little bit. Yesterday, I was driving to work and I played the song. And I remember sit, thinking, wow, I, I did it. I wrote a song for my wife. No one can ever take that away. Anytime we get in an argument, <laughs> whatever, I'll just put that on in the background. It's pretty romantic. Okay, let's talk about the voice. Ariana Grande calls you granddaddy. Is that right? Granddad? It is true. You know, it started out as, as like just a dad. And as if that wasn't painful enough, now it's turned into to granddad. And the thing is, what's your comeback? You just call her granddaughter? When you look at Ariana, it's hard to pick her apart. I mean, she's Ariana Grande. What? There are no flaws. You've been posting some pictures on Instagram. I have. <laughs> yes. I'm just wondering, did this person think he was going to marry Gwen Stefani? Of course I did. I mean, look at that hairdo. There was no resisting those locks. What about this look? Is this something you could ever grow? Could you grow your hair this long again? Not only is that painful to look at, <laughs> it's it's painful the process of growing your hair. We have some other ones, but frankly, you are just cute. And, and it... <laughs> While I loved looking at throwback pics, we couldn't wrap without a Hoda and Jenna quiz. You ready? All right, bring it on. Okay, best wedding gift you received? We had a uh, an entire church pew that was given to us, and everybody, and there wasn't that many people, I think there was about 30 people at our wedding. Everybody signed it and wrote a message on it. Now that, that pew lives in the chapel. That's pretty pretty special to, to she That's and I both. How many pair of cowboy boots do you own? I own probably about 10 pair, but they're all the exact same boot. Your favorite hair color of your wife's? <laughs> There's a lot of choices, isn't there? There's been a few times where she's kind of done a Marilyn Monroe yeah. look with her hair, and oh my yes. God, that's, yes. that's good stuff. Thank you so much, Blake. We'll send you some of these pictures. Oh, please. I'll, yes, I'd love to have those so I can shred them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, oh, just sweet. sharing just some one-on-one -on -one time. <laughs> you know what? One-on-one -on -one time. In fact, that's probably where I lost my voice. I just couldn't stop chuckling way, with him. He's adorable. Right? I know. Well, he did ask huh? about you. When? And not that for poster, five seconds. That poster's <laughs> headed his way. Okay? I no, we don't need Hoda. I don't want to be in it. Okay, we don't look, need Hoda. I'm not interested. Who? I don't. No, it, you know what? Hoda was busy, I think, and so she couldn't I have time for Blake Shelton. Not ring. Bye. Uh, and so since she didn't have time for Blake Shelton, he and I got a little one-on-one -on -one time. <laughs> Hoda, don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. One-on-one. -on -one, it was just the two of us. There were others there. No, no. In my mind, <laughs> it was just the two of us. Hoda, I'm so sorry you could not get on. Intimate. Join us tomorrow on Today, because we're counting down to Thanksgiving. We've got an exclusive sneak peek at some of the floats that you will see at the big Macy's Thanksgiving. Can't believe this is next week. I know what's happening. We'll see you then. Have a great day. Bye.
Michael, thanks for doing this. Good to see you, man. All right, you as well. Thanks for having me. We could spend most of this interview talking about New Jersey high school football, I think, but maybe we'll save that for a different time and focus on the save movie. Save that for <laughs> another time. We can save that for another time, man. <laughs> so let's talk about Without Remorse. I told you I just watched it today, and man, it comes out and grabs you from the word go and doesn't let go for the next couple of hours. Um, what does it feel like to be on the, the eve of this movie coming out that you've poured so much into? I, I'm excited. You know, honestly, uh, you know, uh, we finished shooting this movie right before the pandemic hit. So to go through post and edit, and, you know, and really, you know, put this movie together um, and not really sure where exactly, you know, when it was going to come out. So now that things are loosening back up and, uh, you know, getting ready to, you know, drop it on, you know, on Amazon Prime, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited about this one. Man. So let's give people a little bit of the backstory without giving too much away about who John Kelly yeah. is. It's based off the Tom Clancy book, which right away people lean in and they want to see it. But this is sort of the origin character, origin story of a character they may not know as well. Yeah, John Kelly. So this is like, you know, arguably, you know, his you know, second, probably most famous character that 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 he's um you know created you know in his novels um and i've always been a fan of the tom clancy universe you know growing up playing rainbow six video games and really you know envisioning myself throughout these missions so when i had an opportunity to really like give uh you know john kelly a, a you know a fresh take and modernize the story you know that that kind of is more reflective of the world that I, that i live in today you know i just jumped at the opportunity um he kind of you know he goes through a personal tragedy you know, he's a you know, Navy SEAL, you know, he's a, a really loyal guy, you know, he believes in um, everything that he does. Um, and, and when he uh, gets wrong, you know, he, he wants some answers, you know, and, and this movie kind of takes place uh, of, of John looking for those answers, uh, no matter where they are. The video game part of this is crazy to me because you literally are living out the fantasy of every kid. You grow up playing a video game and now you get to go live it out. Exactly. And, that, and that's one of the things, you know, I mean, I love my job, man. And I love being <laughs> able, um, you know, to, to, you know, do my own stunts. You know, I mean, as a kid in the living room, when you're taking the couch cushions and, you know, you're, you know, you're jumping off of them and, you know, pretending, you know, playing make believe of whatever it is. Uh, these are the type of movies that I watched growing up. And so I finally be able to get into a place where I could do my own stunts and I can train for, um, you know, underwater sequences and, you know, and burning cars and, you know, tactical training and explosions and all that good stuff. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a dream come true. You've called this the ideal movie for you, that when you saw this, you were like, I need to do this. Why do you say that exactly? Uh, because I'm, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know, looking up to, you know, you know, movie stars and action, action heroes like, you know, Tom Cruise and, uh, Michael Jai White, you know, Wesley Snipes, Jackie Chan, you know, these guys, they always put the work into it. You know, they, they study, they train um, so they could, you know, be put in a position to actually do the stunts themselves. And I always wanted to do that. You know, I always wanted a, a vehicle or a movie that would allow me to actually do my own stuff. So, you know, for this one, I had a great stunt team. You know, we were very safe, uh, put a lot of time into uh, working out and training and getting prepared so they felt comfortable enough putting me in those positions. When you say you're doing your own stunts and you do in this movie, when I watch you walk up to a burning car, casually open the door and get in, <laughs> or plunge into a river, let's say, and hold your breath yeah. underwater for a while, that's you? That's Michael B. Jordan? Yeah, that's me, man. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously, you know, I have a, like my stunt double, Clay, you know, it goes through things, make sure everything's safe, you know, works out all the kinks, make sure, you know, everything is, is awesome uh, and safe as safe as can be. But no, man, like, you know, doing military, you know, you know, diving, you know, and, and, you know, going to dive tanks and, you know, spending hours and hours and hours under there becoming comfortable. Um, uh, the burning car is like, it's not too much you could really do to train for that. You know, I, I think that's the one I, I thought about the least. I was like, all right, cool. I gotta do what? Okay, cool. Let's do it. Don't think about it. You know, the, you know, you put some, you know, flame retardant gel on you to make sure, you know, you can stay as cool as possible for as long as possible, but you still might walk away with a few less eyebrows and eyelashes. <laughs> It gets pretty hot getting in out of the car. Is there anybody in your life or on set saying, hey, you're one of the biggest movie stars in the world. We don't need you walking into a burning car right now. I mean, I, I all the producers, I think everybody was, was saying that, you know, <laughs> had my mom on speed dial, you know, so I think it was one of those things where, 
I, I definitely had to persuade them at certain moments to 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 let me do the things that they were like, ah, you don't have to. I'm like, no, 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 I want to. Let's do it. Let's let's, let's figure it out. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. You've said before that your mom gets tired of watching you die in movies over the course of your career, so she didn't want to see it in this one. Yeah, this one gave her a lot of anxiety, but um, but but it, it wasn't as nerve wracking. I'm sure as some of the other characters that I played that uh, didn't make it out, you know. So so you know, as you get older, you know, you start to, you know, mature and have other roles that that you want to see them, you know, make it to the you know to the end of the credits, you know. So it's uh, it's it, it was good. Speaking of the end of the credits, there's a moment after the credits. Mm -hmm. that leads me to believe this may be the beginning of something for you. Is that fair to say in this series? Yeah, yeah that's fair to say. I mean, I think we want to, you know, definitely stick around after the uh, after the credits. Um, but yeah, I think we're, you know, you know, we're alluding to the fact that we think we created a world that was, you know, interesting and cool and fun. And uh, we want to see where, you know, John Clark goes from here, you know, and uh, I don't think he's done yet, you know, mm. so. Yeah, he has a lot more to do, and I'm really interested to see where he goes. Is it cool for you, Michael, to have reached the point in your career where you can live out some of these fantasies, to have grown up watching Matt Damon be Jason Bourne or Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible or all the stars you mentioned, and now there you are standing as the guy that some kid watching movies growing up is going to say, I want to be Michael B. Jordan in those movies? No, that's cool, man. That's, uh, that's you know... Yeah, I mean, I think it's safe to say that's something that, you know, I, 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 you know I'm hopeful of, you know, and, and I want to continue to do movies like this. Um, you know, continue to, to continue to inspire, you know, I think representation is extremely important, you know, so to be able to, you know, do a, a wide, uh, you know, range of movies in different genres. And this is like my first one in this space. So to be able to, um, to be able to, you know, to do this type of movie is, 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 is exciting for me and it hopefully inspires uh, a lot of kids too. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night. It's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. To cover the news, you have to be in it. We'll take you to the front lines of the story, bringing your news feed to life. Streaming live every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. My forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Yeah, people may not realize that you're a producer of the movie Outlier Society, your production company, which has become this sort of force in Hollywood. Talk a little, if you can, Michael, about why you established that, what you wanted to accomplish with that, and how it's grown now to back these major projects like Remorse. Yeah, I think in the beginning, um, you know, starting my own production company kind of sparked from um, my time on Friday Night Lights and Parenthood, you know, being around, you know, Peter Berg, you know, Sarah Aubrey, you know, and uh, Jason Kadem, and, and kind of, you know, Pete, Pete was like, you know, one day you're going to get tired of like uh, waiting for the phone to call. You know, you just got to gotta start owning things and creating your own IP and and uh, ownership, ownership, ownership. And I was like, you know, and at that at young age, I just started you know, thinking about creating things, you know, creating opportunities for others. You know, I've been extremely blessed to have a, you know, a fruitful career thus far. And I want to, um, you know, you got to pay that forward, you know. Um, so to be able to like create, have a production company 
who um, you know can shine a light on stories that maybe normally wouldn't wouldn't get told, you know, and also uh, you know normalize you know um, you know films and filmmakers and building around talent that um, that maybe wouldn't have gotten a shot or opportunity. You know, I want to be the the tip of the tip of the spear in that type of way and and uh, create those opportunities for them. And you put riders in the deals where you have to have a certain level of inclusivity in terms of who works on the movie, which is an amazing piece of leverage that a handful of stars, I would think, could bring to a, a project. Yeah, the inclusion writer, you know, was inspired by Francis, Francis McDormand, you know, um, a few years ago during her famous, uh, you know, Ox, o Oscar speech. And I was, you know, in the audience and I heard it and I was like, oh man, okay. There's something, you know, in writing that, that we can actually, you know, put into play. I was like, okay, cool. So, and that was something that, you know, we, we you know, my team started to build upon and um, and we made that, you know, part of our, you know, our company policy. And that's something that, you know, just kind of, you know, tries to, you know, raise the accountability, you know, of um, of our partners with Outlier Society. And, um, and and it's and it's been very successful. It's been adopted uh, on every project thus far uh, since, since we put that in place and uh, we'll continue to do so moving forward. So it's, um, yeah, it's definitely something I'm proud of. And, you know, we're taking steps in the right direction. A long way to go, a lot of work to do, but, but I think if we continue to lead by example um, and, you know, one step, one foot in front of the other, you know, when it's all said and done, we'll look up and be like, okay, you know, we did something. Good for you for using your position for, for good that way. It's it's funny to hear you talk about the people you looked up to growing up. And I'm thinking back to your youth, your childhood in Newark, New Jersey, and how you got from where you were in Newark to modeling and acting. What was the what was the leap for you? How did that young kid at 11 years old hop into modeling? And eventually that was sort of the road to show business. Uh, it was my mom, you know, my mom really uh, got me into it. She, uh, you know, randomly, uh, you know, at a doctor's appointment, the receptionist had two little boys who were, you know, you know, were in the industry, you know, uh, that were, were models at the time and was like, you know, you should bring your, you know, your sons with you too, you know, with, with me and, you know, crash this audition. I crashed this audition and ended up booking it got in trouble because I didn't have any representation or whatever the case is. And then, uh, and, and honestly, you know, the rest was history, you know, um, had a backstage newspaper down at Penn station, randomly looked up a manager that had took out an ad, you know, for open calls, went in audition. She signed me that day and we were going out on, uh, you know, go sees and auditions and stuff at you know, 10, 11, 12. And then it just one, you know, one small success to another, one step, you know, one stepping stone to, to another one. I just kind of just kept going. Sometimes you just got to like walk your path. You know, you don't really know where it's going to end up. And then you start to learn and you get to another level and you, you assess and you learn and you build and your confidence and you continue to grow and you just figure it out. And it's just kind of always been like following my gut, and my intuition. But, I, you know, I credit my mom for sure. Uh, get me started and pushing me where I am. Was that even on your radar though, Michael, as a kid? I know you love sports. You're a good athlete. Was that something that you thought of like, oh, maybe someday I'll try actor? Or was it just that out of the blue? Out of the blue. No, it was no, it was no thought at all, honestly. <laughs> I was uh enjoying, you know, sports and and just hanging out with my friends and, you know, just living. You know, you're a kid at that point. You know, I mean, I guess some some kids know exactly what they want to do at a young age, but I always loved, you know, um, you know, animation and movies and television shows, you know, I was always enter entertained by that. So um, it was just, I guess, it's a natural evolution. than a headline. It informs, it inspires, and it still matters. To cover it, you have to be in it. And that's what we're gonna do. Every night, we take you to the front lines of the story, where it's actually happening, with NBC News journalists on the ground from all over the world. We cover what you need to know and bring your news feed to life. In primetime and streaming live, it's your news playlist every night. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at seven on NBC News Now.
Grab your apron for a new podcast, Cooking Up a Storm with Al Roker. I forecast, yummy. Some of the best chefs spill the beans on family secrets to get you ready for Thanksgiving. Didn't fun. Bringing the heat for the holidays. Follow now wherever you get your podcasts. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. International Day of the Girl. The strength and courage of these women is remarkable. What's your message to girls who want to make a difference? Believe in yourself. You can make it happen. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today. Let's go. We're going to kick off the Pink Power and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Go. What's the best thing about being this age? You have nothing to prove, because you already proved it. What does it feel like to be in a city that you love so much? I am humbly proud that I stuck up for my town. We all have the honor of helping reopen the doors. Broadway is back! The Meet the Press Chuck Toddcast. Free wherever you get your podcasts. Most people point to your performance on The Wire as sort of the breakthrough, playing Wallace. How big of that, how big a deal was that in your life, in your career? Did that give you the taste of, okay, I think I can do this for a living? Yeah, that was, uh, that was when I really fell in love with acting. That's when I was around, you know, um, a lot of veteran actors that, you know, like, you know, Idris Elba, you know, Dominic West, uh, J.D. Williams, Andre Royal, like those guys really... Um, sat me down and had conversations with me on set and was like, hey, you can, you can, this could be a career for you, you know, if you continue to, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're serious about it and you, you really, you really keep uh, working at it. And uh, that was when I first started to like, you know, really look at it differently than just, oh, I'm getting out of school and I could, you know, and I'm, and I'm uh, you know, you know or like, or just, you know, yeah, I just looked at it more as a business that type of way. And then from then, uh, falling in love with acting, you know, um, just was my thing. And then a crazy connection on All My Children where you actually replaced Chadwick Boseman, who had become one of your great friends. What was that experience like on All My Children? Yeah, I mean, that's where the work ethic kicked in. You know, we would do so many episodes a week, you know, and um, just like we would just like, you know, we would crank them out. It, it was a lot. Uh, you know, you just always had to be prepared. So I think that's where I really got my acting school. You know, I think that was when I really kind of started to uh, uh, get my reps in, you know, I guess, as an actor. And, it, you know, in hindsight, you know, I was, you know, with Chadwick of it all, when we first kind of, you know, uh, first first met. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's wild. It's wild. Yeah. yeah, I mean, when you think about what came for you guys later with, one of the biggest movies in the history of Hollywood and Black Panther, to build that relationship coming off of All My Children, it's got to be crazy. What did he mean to you as a friend? No, I mean, you know, he's a, he's a special person. You know, and it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tragic loss, you know, for all of us, you know, for me, um, you know, uh, our community, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, we're still dealing with it, you know. I think we're still processing, you know. I think it comes in waves, but, you know, his legacy that he left behind, the um, the impact that he's made on so many, you know, people around the world, you know, his family, um, he lives forever, you know. Um, you know, he, he has an incredible body of work to be able to, you know, that we can reminisce and, you know, and get a chance to, uh, you know, see pieces of him. But but he, but he's uh, he's still with us, you know what I mean? His, his uh, he, he's, he's still around, so you, he motivates and inspires me, so it's, it's cool. Were you guys, I interviewed Chadwick right in the middle of Black Panther mania. I think you guys had just come back from South Korea or something. And he just plopped down across and was like, oh, just on this whirlwind as the movie was catching fire. Could you guys believe in that moment, not just how big it was at the box office, but what a cultural force it had become around the world? I mean, I think we were at that point, we were constantly taking it in from city to city, from country to country, you know, really like, wow, okay, this is the reaction that we're getting from people. You know, this, the kids, the, um, you know, it's really all about the, the children and the kids, man, to see those look, the looks on their faces. 
um, you know, of admiration and just, you know, and, and, you know, and just happiness and oh wow, like just to know that type of impact we're making um, was uh, was really special. You know, a time in my life I'll never forget. So it was it was a lot of fun. For what it's worth, my kids still say your line when you took the mask from the museum. You said, "Nah, I'm just feeling it. I just want this." Mask. <laughs> they still drop that around the house. <laughs> oh man, that's cool. See, stuff like that is cool, man. That's that's uh, that's what it's all about. They just drop it in. Um, am I right in, in reading your story, Michael? That before Friday Night Lights, when you'd gone out to L.A., it was a bit of a struggle for you, even with the success of The Wire and the other things you'd done, that you were wondering whether or not maybe this was the right thing and you even considered going back home to Jersey? Yeah, you know, nothing's guaranteed, right? So I, even with the successes of, you know, The Wire and, you know, All My Children and all that good stuff, you know, there's a lot of talented actors out there. You know, there's a lot of that, that, that don't, you know, for whatever reason, kind of make it over that hump, you know? Um, and that show, The Wire, kind of, in real time, it wasn't as popular as it was after right. the show was over. So, you know, doors started opening up, the right people were watching the shows that I was doing, you know, so slowly uh, things started to catch on. But at first, when I got out here, you know, it's, you know, life of an actor, you know, you're trying to, you know, you try to put a string of jobs together where you can like, you know, survive and stay out here long enough until you can actually figure out what your career is going to be or what projects you can actually, um, you know, uh, live off of, you know, so I think, you know, in the beginning, you know, I just knew there was a, I had a threshold, there was a moment, right? <laughs> but it's so crazy, like, you know, they say, like, right when you get ready to quit, you know, that's the moment. If you just keep going a little bit further, you would, you would have, you would have made it, you know? So it's a little bit of that, you know, you had that doubt for whatever reason, you just continue to push through and, you know, you know, and here I am. So it's, uh, Obviously, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Yeah, not everybody who does well on a TV show keeps pushing, though. You know, sometimes that's the moment in time and that's the thing they did. But you kept going with Fruitvale and with Creed and all these films. At what point did you feel like you were a movie actor, really? Because you had success in television. When did you feel like, OK, now this is my thing. I'm in movies. You know, Fruitvale for me was the first time that, I, you know, that answered a lot of questions and as far as like carrying a film, you know, in a movie. Um, but, you know, I still, you know, you know, it's, it's a, I'm a real chill guy, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes I gotta, you know, I gotta re remind myself, you know what I'm saying? Of, uh, you know, the, the blessings and accomplish that, accomplishments that I've had thus far that, uh, but yeah, it's a, I don't believe my own hype. I don't drink the Kool-Aid, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I just, I, just, I just do the work, man, and try to tell honest stories. And I'm, and I'm happy that, you know, I'm able to make an impact on people and that people enjoy watching my work, you know, and uh, I continue to kind of have that attitude and point of view on it, you know. And part of that progression now is you're going to direct Creed 3, which is amazing. Your directorial debut. I know you're being directed as we speak by Denzel Washington. Is he giving you any pointers on how to do this? Yeah, everybody is, man. I'm, 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 uh, I'll be a fool not to listen to, you know, <laughs> You know, like the greats, you know, and, and Denzel has so many gems and wisdoms to to, to, to give. So, um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking forward to telling the story and finally stepping behind the camera. Uh, I feel like I've been uh, in my head secretly, you know, observing from that from that type of uh, perspective for a long time and, you know, waiting for the right thing or the right opportunity, you know, the right story to be able to tell. And I, I can't think of a better one than than. Uh, and Adonis and Creed, so I'm really, I'm really excited about this. Is that going to be a tough thing to do, where you've got to see 360 degrees of the film, and then all of a sudden you got to grease up and get, can get in the ring? <laughs> yeah, I think it's going to be difficult. I mean, it's, 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 it's going to be challenging. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's. That's just what it is. Uh, but I look forward to it. You know, um, it, it's something that, you know, I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. I don't think you're never fully ready for it, but I'm a I'm a jump in the deep end type of guy. So, you know, here we go. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There is some late breaking news. All yeah, right, it's love that. People really don't know what's going to happen. Nearly a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. 
more good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news for us. The Iowa caucuses by the man of the All right, it just me too. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. People really don't know what's going to happen. Only a dozen hours after the eye roared ashore. There's more good people than bad people, I know, right? There is some late breaking news for hours in the Iowa caucuses. All right, it just me too. The Meet the Press Chuck Todd cast, free wherever you get your podcasts. You, it's funny to hear you say you are a chill guy and you don't get swept up in all the things that have come your way. So how do you react when something like people's sexiest man alive comes to you? I just smile, you? man. Hey, look, just <laughs> smile and enjoy it. Trust me, I got enough people around me, my friends and family, who give me enough <laughs> that, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's you know they 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 keep me they keep me they keep me pretty grounded and humble. But it's, it's it's all fun, you know. It's a big target. Imagine all the group chats and all your close oh. friends and everything that you do is because the sexiest sexiest man alive. It's like yeah, okay, it's annoying after a while. But I imagine, imagine on one hand it's an honor, on the other hand you go, oh, I'm gonna hear from everybody. Exactly. I mean, my, my mom and my aunties, you know, and all my you know all my like you know all the women in my family. It's 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 it's. <laughs> It's gold, you know, everybody <laughs> else, it's a target. You, it does seem to me though, over the last few years, you've become more comfortable with the, the celebrity thing. Is that fair to say you've been more open with your private life and you're in love right now and you've been very open about that? Are you, is it easier for you to kind of let that wall down a little bit? You mean, I mean, I think, you know, just understanding the industry and all the, the things that come along with it, you know, it's all, it's, it's not all glitter and gold and, um, and, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a transition, you know, but still very private, you know, still, you know, keep a lot of, you know, stuff to myself, you know, but there's certain areas of my life that, you know, I chose to, to, to put out there, uh, more of a way to be like, all right, it's there. Now it's, we go and move on, right? And just continue to like, yeah, like we can we can move on. Like it doesn't have to be the, the 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 private eye trying to dig and find out what's the, every little thing. So, um, but yeah, I'm happy, man. And, and it's uh, and I and I, and I probably always will, you know, keep keep that part of my life, you know, what I'm saying to myself. But but it's uh, you know, nobody's hiding anything. Well, that's interesting that you say that because a lot of people notice that with Lori, you've kind of gone on Instagram. And it sounds like it's a bit of a strategy to demystify it. No, nah, not a strategy, man. It's just more or less like this is what it is, and all right, let's keep it moving. Like it's it's uh that's that I mean that's really it, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, the film appreciate Without it. Remorse is incredible. We didn't get around to the rivalry with Behringer in Newark, but we're, we'll hit that next time. We'll, we'll get that on the next one. All right, Michael. Thanks for the time. Congrats. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. All right. All right, see ya. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your favorite okay. character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> what is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the rap of Luna. <laughs> when I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. My buddy Cal cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today. With simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit <laughs> now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do the weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. Will you judge okay. us in a cook-off? I yes. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win.